three. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's budget for Council. Welcome also to members of the public who are watching via our YouTube channel. Councillors, please be mindful of the etiquette guidance that has been issued, which will ensure you can be viewed and understood by members of the public watching from home. May I please remind everyone to behave with due courtesy, tolerance and respect for another person's views. Conduct yourselves in, and conduct yourselves in a reasonable way. At this meeting, named votes will take place by way of a roll call. Councillors have been provided with guidance on how to help the roll call take place as smoothly as possible. Supplementary information has been published further to the agenda, including the amendments received, Council tax information following the discussions of the police and crime panel, a report from Resources Scrutiny Commission, supplementary information to the company's report, and a report from the Schools Forum. Please see our website for all the published information about today's meeting. We will now move to the agenda. I'd like to move to agenda item two, apologies for absence. I have received apologies from the following councillors, Councillor Mike Davis, Councillor Abraham. Do I have any other apologies? Thank you. I would now like to move to item three, declarations of interest. Can I please ask whether any councillors have any interest to declare regarding the items on today's agenda? Thank you very much indeed. I'd now like to move to agenda item four, minutes of the previous meeting. Firstly, I move the, me me sorry, I move the minutes of the meeting of the council held on the 12th of January 2021 as a collector correct record. Do I have a seconder? Seconded, Lord Mayor. Councillor Kent, when you can you turn change microphones because we can barely hear you. Thanks, I've done. Thank you. Can I take that that that, that is agreed? Any votes against? Thank you very much. I would now like to move to agenda item five, Lord Mayor's business. I would like to inform you of the sad news that Barbara Cook, Lady Mayoress from 2004 to 2005 and wife of Simon Cook passed away in January. Um, obviously I've known Barbara, I knew Barbara for a very long time and I found that she was a, a very a lovely lady, um, had previously been a teacher and um, was a very good support to the Lord Mayor Simon when he was the Lord Mayor of Bristol. I would now like to take the opportunity <clears throat> at this point to hold a minute's silence in respect. If you'd all like to bow your heads, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. I would now like to move to agenda item six, public forum. Within the constitution, there is no provision for public forum 
at the budget meeting. However, as indicated on the agenda, it has been agreed that petitions and written statements about the budget and reports on this agenda will be submitted to this meeting. Seven written statements were received by the deadline. The statements have been circulated to councillors and the mayor prior to the meeting. And I now ask that full council notes the statements. Thank you. I would now like to move to agenda item seven, budget report 2021 to 2022. I would like to refer members to the budget, budget procedure document, which was published in the agenda papers and is available on the website. As this procedure technically varies from our standing orders, please can I ask full council to formally agree to suspend the relevant standing orders which relate to the policy and budget framework. All those in favour say aye. 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 Thank Aye. you very much. I will take that as implied consent. Thank you very much. <laughs> we start then with section one of the procedure. Please may I ask Mayor Rees to introduce, summarise and move to the budget report. Mayor, you have up to 15 minutes. Thank you. Thanks very much. And I'm delighted to bring yet another uh, No Cuts budget to the council. It underpins our aspirations for Bristol as we plan our recovery from COVID and the delivery over the medium to long term that will enable Bristol to build back uh, as a city of hope where no one is left behind. So our general fund net revenue budget outlines spending of £424 million on our key services. Uh, we also bring an ambitious capital programme that goes up to 2025 with a gross value of uh, around £900 million. Uh, with a strategic partner now in place, we're in, we're in an even stronger position uh, to realise our capital ambitions uh, for Bristol. The principles that underpin what we do will remain, um, inclusion and sustainability. And uh, it's important to recognise uh, that we have put the UN Sustainable Development Goals at the heart of what we do. And it's really important that we build those SDGs into the very uh, foundations of our decision-making uh, frameworks. So I just want to congratulate the finance team and uh, Craig Cheney uh, for all their work. COVID, Brexit and austerity have come together uh, to bring incredible challenges in which circumstances have been created, in which uh, demands for our services have risen. Funding for councils has not kept pace uh, with the scale of increasing demand and council revenues have been undermined. And on top of this, it's not just our front facing services that have been hit. It's a point I make repeatedly, but it's the backroom capacity, our lawyers, our project managers and accountants. That's been hit hard as they've also had to work incredibly hard to take on and manage the increasing scale of the challenges uh, we face. So I think back on what we inherited, the 30 million pounds hole in the budget that Steve Bundred described as the result of, and I quote, a sequence of events that represents a collective failure of leadership within the council for which several people, included ele including elected politicians, bear responsibility. And today we bring a 420 million pound budget, 99.5% of which has been accepted without change. Uh, there is no question that fiscal responsibility has been delivered. And I want to take the opportunity to make a few additional uh, remarks as well. And it's thinking about the challenges we face today. So we've all seen what we don't want. During a debate around uh, whether Bristol should take on the mayoral model, John Savage described the Bristol City Council as something like an old Victorian fairground machine, a complex mix of busy cogs, chains and bells that, for a while at least, is fascinating to look at. It took a lot of building and requires a lot of maintenance, but it didn't actually do anything. In moving this budget, we're laying out the, 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 the future of the city and the role of this organization in the city. We must remember what we're here for. We're here to deliver, to get things done. 
not just to maintain our own internal cogs, bells and, and, and whistles. I see a flurry of additional meetings uh, being called at the moment, two extraordinary full council meetings, four call-ins, extra HR uh, committees, which I fear is more about into using the internal processes to clog things up and make noise that may or may not win a headline than it is about securing delivery for Bristol. It was a three-time Conservative Prime Minister, Edward Stanley, the 14th Earl of Derby, who said, and I quote, the duty of an opposition is very simple, to oppose everything and propose nothing. Well, that may, have worked, that may have worked well for the aristocracy in the 19th century, but it won't work for Bristol today. The city needs and deserves more from all of us elected mm -hmm. to lead in Bristol with a ferocious focus on getting things done uh, for Bristol. And that's why we focused on delivery. This budget gets the basics right. In this budget, we prioritise a council house rent freeze, a, a council house rent freeze. Uh, we're the only city to have a fully funded council tax reduction scheme supporting over 25,000 households. There's 26 million pound investment in SEN uh, over four years, 132 million for housing delivery over five years, 75 million for transport and highways. This budget builds on our record of delivery, including building 9,000 new homes, including affordable homes, with schemes ongoing across the city, including Hengrove Park, Bonn and to Walk, Z Pods and launch pads, with the finishing touches being put to Ashton Rise. Um, we've introduced HMO regulation and landlord licensing. Nearly 12,000 experiences of work have been given out to Bristol young people through Bristol Works, including for young people from the most deprived areas and or with SEN. We've secured 12 million pounds for Bottle Yard Studios expansion, made Bristol a uh, accredited living wage city, leading as a living wage employer ourselves. We banned the box, we launched Stepping Up, and now kickstart programs to drive diversity and inclusion is live uh, within the city. We've kept our children's centres open and adopted a children's charter. We're creating more new school places with 87% of parents getting their first choice primary school place. The Healthy Holidays campaign have, uh, has, has worked together to feed Bristol's children during our school holidays with free breakfast clubs uh, rolled out across the city. And we won World Health Organization uh, status as an age-friendly uh, city. We secured the UK's largest biogas bus order. We're delivering a net zero council by 2025, reducing emissions by 9% in 2019 alone. We've, we've uh, overseen the community wind bar, uh, turbines in Avonmouth and a big tidy deep clean of 700 streets last year and the best recycling uh, rates amongst the, the country's uh, core cities. When you, and that's just some of it. And when you take a minute to look at it, it's surprising just how much has been done in five years, despite the circumstances we inherited and in which we are operating. Now, the appeal at the moment, I think, for me, is let's remember the real change. I know we're coming up to an election and this is the last budget before the election. And so there'll be an attempt to, uh, to, to make some noise and, uh, and do the usual uh, council bun fights. But let's think back to what we actually are facing up to here. We need to keep people safe from COVID as a virus and as a city limit the opportunities COVID will have to mutate. We need to support the city recover from the COVID depression that is coming upon us. We know that the underlying drivers of inequality will be strengthened by COVID and the consequences of the lockdown. Those most marginal to the economy will be hit first and hardest, and then they, then they will be least well-placed to benefit, to benefit from any economic upturn um, when it comes. We have our ongoing housing crisis. We have a looming wave of mental health need coming upon us and an urgent need to launch our educational recovery plan that we are doing right now uh, with the uh, city office. Only this morning, Helen Godwin and I met with city partners to plan how we will overcome the March 31st funding cliff edge for people with no recourse to public funds, uh, facing a pros prospect of losing all support and, and then the accommodation end up on our uh, streets. And we have to meet these challenges in the context of a climate and ecological uh, emergencies. That means minimizing, even eliminating the price the planet pays for us tackling these challenges, which will involve resource use. For a city, 
population that is predicted to grow by around 100,000 people over the next 25 years. That feeds into another challenge we face, which is about how we get the, the scale and the pace of, riti, uh, of city redesign and rebuild that will cost billions of pounds and take uh, 15 to 20 years at a minimum to decarbonize the very systems that, uh, that underpin uh, city life. And that's where we need to remember that uh, we, as people elected to lead in Bristol, will be at our most useful and our most relevant, dare I say, in seeing, defining, understanding, and directing our energies towards these challenges that Bristol and the world faces, rather than small swipes that may or may not win temporary, if superficial, uh, headlines. So this budget is about getting the basics right. It's about putting us on a sure footing, supporting the city's vulnerable, and investing in our collective ambition uh, for the future. Estimates are that at this time, 12 local authorities are on the edge of financial collapse. And despite the circumstances we came into, we're not one of them. And uh, that gives me great pleasure to bring this budget uh, to you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. We now move to section two of the procedure. Please may I ask Councillor Cheney, designated Deputy Mayor, for finance, governance, and performance to second the budget report. Councillor, you have up to seven minutes. Thank you. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. Today, I'm bringing our fifth budget to council in the strangest of circumstances. None of us could have predicted we would be here when we had these discussions in previous years. The pandemic now has been with us for a year. What quickly became obvious, of course, was that just like in over 10 years of austerity, the impact of the pandemic would hit the poorest and most vulnerable the hardest. We could have predicted that given the variables. Up and, down the land, the council, up and down the land, councils are struggling to balance their finances, and we are aware of at least 12 local authorities on the cusp of issuing Section 114 notices, meaning they will need to stop all non-essential spend and may ultimately see the government step in and take control, thereby reducing their ability to support those most vulnerable residents. We are not in that position. The reason we are not in this position, despite all the noise and fuss in the run-up to the election, is that we have a firm grip on the finances here. We continue to manage the local flavour of the national crisis in adult social care, we continue to put right the historical problems with SEND provision. We continue to build homes to look after the vulnerable, to help the homeless, to fight the stresses and strains on family budgets by freezing council house rents, all the while supporting the culture sector, building new homes, work with those in the nighttime economy, putting in the economic and physical building blocks for the city of the future with things like Temple Quarter development, rebuilding the Bristol Beacon, providing support to new and small businesses in the city, particularly in South Bristol, this long entrenched levels of deprivation. Transport improvements, new schools, supporting community groups to become more sustainable and so much more. As well as doing all of this, we've had to transition the council to a home working model. We've had to furlough staff, we've had to move staff around to support the COVID efforts. efforts. Staff from all over the council redeployed into processing business grants, supporting the volunteer effort and beyond. The reality of 12 years of austerity is that very few decisions come without taking without a decision to deprioritise something else. We continue to take those decisions calmly whilst keeping our values front and centre in our minds. Looking back over the five years, all of this could have been so different. When we came in, there was a huge hole in the revenue budget, not a capital funding project that failed, but a £29 million a year budget gap with no plans to mitigate it. The finance director was an interim and had no place in the senior leadership team, a structure and culture that frankly wasn't working for anyone. We were forced to introduce our own spending freeze whilst fix these problems and try to get a grip on the dysfunctional processes all the while to continue to deliver the services people expect and rely on. I don't say these things to point any fingers anywhere, but to emphasise what a journey we have been on and that the strength of our current position, while not the most obviously exciting thing to people outside of City Hall, has meant that we have ridden the wave of COVID with reasonable calm, but we will not be finding ourselves in a weakened position, scrabbling around for huge budget savings or making difficult short-term decisions to balance budgets. We have built financial strength and depth, not without its challenges, but we are confident that this budget puts, us, puts the council in a strong position again for the year ahead. Thank you very much indeed. We now start then with section three of the procedure. Each party group will now in turn respond to the budget proposals. There will be a maximum time allocated of seven minutes per speaker. Firstly then, I would like to call upon Councillor Hickman to respond to the Mayor's budget proposals on behalf of the Labour Group. You have seven minutes, Councillor, thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. This year has been exceptionally difficult for everyone. 
Bristolians have lost loved ones, jobs and a sense of well-being from pandemic and the lockdowns. Against this backdrop, I'll focus on the positives. Throughout the past year, voluntary organisations, key workers, communities and individuals have been inspiring. In Lawrence Hill, I've been particularly proud of how people came together during the first lockdown to promote the public health message and how they're now coming together to dispel the myths about the vaccines. This budget is all about how to support the city's continued work to build a better Bristol. The council too has done its bit to help people get by. We've worked in tandem with charities and volunteers, supported businesses with grants and provided free school meals. Government support has been inadequate, breaking their promise to local authorities. A number of councils are struggling with at least a dozen reported to be in rescue talks after whatever it takes became whatever we can get away with. Considering the horrendous circumstances, I think it's only right that we acknowledge the sterling job that Marvin and Craig have done with the council finances. And I want to particularly thank council finance officers for their continued wizardry. Some of the opposition takes this hard work for granted, refusing to give credit where credit's due. But as we know, this pandemic has hit the most vulnerable the hardest. The worst off are more likely to lose their jobs, rack up debts and even die from COVID. It is only right that our budget protects them where we can, and it does. No cuts to services, a rent freeze for some of our poorest citizens, more funding for social care amid years of continued government inaction, more affordable homes than at any point in a decade, despite disruption to the sector from years of Brexit uncertainty and a year of pandemic calamity and support for businesses, many of whom feel left behind in terms of national help. All of this in our budget, despite the financial hit of 10 years of austerity and inheriting a, a council with a 30 million gap, gaping holes left by some of the members opposite who undoubtedly will invent much to grumble about today as they always do, gaping holes closed, thanks to the diligent work of Craig with the support of our labor group. A lot of this work has gone unnoticed, but lays the foundation for the city to thrive after the pandemic. Today's amendments are likely to see opposition members chuntering from the sidelines while we're busy building affordable homes, improving the lives of the worst off, decarbonising our transport and heating systems and helping to create opportunity throughout the city. While Marvin has been showing leadership in an unprecedentedly difficult time, the opposition have continued to be irrationally irate about previous budgets, not spending the best part of 200 million on an arena that would currently be sitting empty with the Californian hedge fund, which would have run it busy cutting their rent payments the world over. Now I want to focus on the merits of this balanced no cuts budget. Nowhere are its merits clearer than through the poor quality of amendments to the budget. It was the same last year when the opposition did not even table amendments to 99.9% .9 of our no cuts budget before again refusing to back Labour's key worker pay rise, investment in bio buses, improved social care, affordable homes, new schools, and one billion for clean energy. The Tory, <clears throat> the Tory amendment to the budget seems to have two aims, making council key workers redundant and reducing the public say in consultations. The Tories like to declare the end of austerity, but cuts are in their DNA. They want to make key council workers redundant from clapping key workers to sacking key workers. After voting against the key worker pay rise last year and backing the government's pay freeze this year, the veneer of care is very thin indeed. Now turning to another budget amendment, the Lib Dems are singing from the same hymn sheet as the Tories. They want more redundancies and fewer people to be allowed to vote for who runs the council. We have heard that the Lib Dems think the frontline council services up for debate today are, I quote, boring. No wonder they presided over such austerity while in government. Our Labour group and administration are not bored by council services. We're passionate about them and grateful to the key workers providing them. We'll be voting to protect jobs and services again today. Things that matter to Bristolians like us and hold together the fabric of the city, not boring, but inspiring. 
Turning now to the Green Party amendments, we agree on the eviction ban, I hope, and on support for student paying for accommodation they don't need and can't use. But seeing their proposal today, Bristolians will be wondering why they believe in pulling out the stops for the Russell Group students and pulling out the rug from beneath council tenants on Russelltown Avenue. On this side of the chamber, we want to help everyone in Bristol, leaving no one behind. At a time when debt and unemployment are rising, when pay is stagnating at best, either deliberately frozen, cut by furlough, or replaced by the broken safety net of universal credit, we know what their HRA amendment means, upping the cost of living for our council tenants, some of the poorest people in the city. It's a mismatch, like the name of their party and their national position on HS2. This is likely to be my final speech as a councillor, should the NHS vaccine rollout continue at such an inspiring pace and should the elections go ahead in May. I've been lucky and privileged to serve, even though like some colleagues, I'd planned to retire last year. I want to quickly reflect on the time, turning a Marianne Williamson quote on its head. It is our light, not the darkness that defines us. It is the positive things we do that define us as politicians, those things that improve people's lives. Days like today, however long the meetings might sometimes feel, are crucial. Budgets are what count, everything else is just words. Voting for budgets pays for new affordable homes, our council tax reduction scheme. Councillor, you have Green 30 seconds deal. left, thank you. Things that tangibly change people's lives for the better, including so many in need of support in Lawrence Hill and around Bristol. In my 10 years on the council, we have faced a decade of national austerity but I hope we have left the city in as strong a position as we can. As a member of our Labour group, it has been an honour to be part of investing in and building a better Bristol. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. I would now like to call upon Councillor Weston to respond to the Mayor's budget proposals on behalf of the Conservative group. You have seven minutes. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you very much, my Lord Mayor. Uh, I fear that probably sets the tone for the rest of the day. And I, I always marvel at the Mayor's ability to deliver a massive swipe at those that try and hold him to account. It's been a strange year, this last one. In fact, 12 months ago, it would have been our last full council meeting together. We we're in the chamber with all of the theatrics that go with it, the heckling, the catcalling. And so it's been I wouldn't say we've enjoyed the last 12 months. I think the democracy itself is strengthened by us being in the chamber, being able to see the whites of our eyes. And I think the last 12 months have brought out the best and the worst in, in everybody. I think there have been people that have really stepped up to the plate. And probably one of the few things I would agree with what's been said by colleagues that have already spoken is our thanks to go out to all of the council workers um, that are in, in front of house and back of house, but also wider workers across the city. We, we do clap for key workers, but actually there are those, for example, those in the retail sector that often don't get the applause that they deserve, who have gone in day after day to make sure the rest of us can afford to continue and to function. So my thanks go to those. But I have to take issue with some of what's been said already. This, this statistic is no doubt going to be rolled out in numerous uh, Labour leaflets. 99.5% of the budget was without change. You have an entire team of accountants that spend months dealing with this. We get three weeks. I don't think you can draft an entire alternative 424 million pound budget in three weeks. Um, so that's just nonsense and you know it. And somehow trying to imply that holding you to account and scrutinizing your actions in some way is wrong, undemocratic, and might actually endanger lives due to the pandemic well, that's just lunacy. That doesn't fly at all. And once, uh, this comes again and again. The mayor is constantly looking for someone else to blame for his own problems. And he did inherit problems, but he has compounded them and they are riddled in this budget. What is also strange, and this is a tradition, I think, for the Labour Party, there has been unprecedented government support for the city. You could argue you might wanted more, and we have offered to work with you to try and lobby for that. The phone is yet to ring, and I suspect probably won't at this stage. So looking at the budget itself today, the first thing that jumps out at me, actually, is hypocrisy. 
because I find it very strange. I've listened to Labour Council speeches complaining about the reduction in council tenant rents when the government brought it in. I remember Councillor Smith standing on the chamber floor when we were allowed in the chamber and delivering a thunderous diatribe against us. And you're proposing the same. Interesting. Well, anyone would think there was an election year, but of course, the mayor doesn't act in a party political manner. So I, I won't give that any more thought. But I'm afraid we do think there are problems with the budget. So it's not a shock. We're not going to be supporting it today. We do believe there's too much waste. We do believe there is a bloated mayoral office. We don't know why you need a social monitoring report. And I'm sorry, there are problems in the 99.5% that we can't amend because we didn't get time. We also believe the budget is far too focused on the centre. And this is a tradition, again, of the Labour Party, that you seem to fail to, to engage with the suburbs. There are real problems, yet all investment seems to flow to the centre. And this budget doesn't change that at all. Our amendment, we think, can improve it. But I think we've already heard the indication of where you're going to be going on that one. But what is also deeply concerning is the risks that come with this budget. And if anyone had enjoyed Appendix 3 of the Budget Risk Register, they'll notice some glaring ones. They'll notice the large red safeguarding vulnerable children where things have gotten worse. The failure to deliver enough affordable homes. The mayor is not on target with that at all, nor likely to be, and wouldn't have been even with the pandemic, which is also what we've been saying for years. And there's a brand new one, major projects capital investment, a brand new massive risk, which brings us to another problem in this budget. We don't believe that all of the content, all the material considerations that colleagues need to make the informed decision is in these papers. We know of additional risks that are not there and we believe should be spelled out. There should be transparency in this. So we are deeply concerned. We're concerned about waste. The, we're concerned that it's ignoring large areas of the city. It lacks details that we need and fails to address those risks. So I'm sorry, although not all the budget is bad, far too much of it is, and we will not be supporting it. I'm afraid the mayor must do better and the public will be holding you to account, which is also what we do. It is our job. So rather than behaving in a sullen manner when we try and do it, Maybe acknowledge the fact that there are problems with your administration and problems with your budget, and they can be remedied. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. Thank you very much. I would now like to call upon Councillor Comley to respond to the Mayor's budget proposals on behalf of the Green Group. You have up to seven minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. This is not altogether a bad budget. It might not be bold or visionary or transformative or any of those things that we would love to see, but you know, it keeps the wheels on the bus. I do have some problems with it. I'm not sure that in a gener generational pandemic is the right time for a real terms cut in public health spending. There are some elements of capital spending like the Bristol Beacon that I fear may be spiraling out of control. Others, like the harbour stabilisation, that could have cost far less if action had been taken in a timely way, instead of waiting until chunks of Bristol were washed down the river. I do worry that there is too much riding on City Leap and that it is being set up to fail by having scrutiny hogtied with commercial sensitivities. We have been here before. Starting school streets with a pilot of two sites feels a little unambitious, especially now that the rules on moving violations have changed to make them so much easier to set up. Then there's adult social care, where once again we see massive savings targets set, and at the same time, millions put into reserves for when they are missed. From my experience of working with people, setting them on an impossible target, which you fully acknowledge is impossible before they start work on it, is not generally a brilliant way to motivate and inspire. I do believe there are changes we can make to the delivery of social care through empowering staff on the ground to move away from thinking about these are the services we have to a resolute focus on the individual, their needs and wishes and how they can be enabled to meet them as independently as possible. That would be better for those receiving social care support and more cost effective too. 
And I know that work towards it has been taking place over the last few years. That kind of culture change needs to permeate all levels. It needs to start with listening to those who are actually doing the work rather than bringing in yet another set of highly paid consultants whose experience is more rarefied. And it is not going to be achieved by standing over the director with a big stick saying, you need to make all these cuts, but you're not gonna. It's also not something that lends itself to a budget amendment, unfortunately. So I'll just give you the food for thought and move on. The most worrying hole in this budget is in the housing revenue account, the part of the budget that deals with our council housing. You can see that if this budget goes ahead as things stand, the HRA reserves will be effectively emptied out by 2025-26. I completely support lowering the level of the reserves if that money is getting spent on building new council houses and improving our existing homes and therefore life for those who live in them. However, we do need to keep a little bit of a cushion. The current gov government finally seem to have realised that council housing is an essential part of the housing mix in this country without which the housing market has become totally dysfunctional. So they've slightly lifted the restrictions that stop councils building. That gives us a window of opportunity that we should seize. Those on the virtual labour benches may have 100% confidence in our current government to be consistent, logical, motivated by the best interests of the people of the country and fully resistant to U-turns. I have to say, I do not share that confidence. If in a few years the big landlords say this has gone far enough, they could certainly slam the brakes back on and we would sorely regret having run our reserves down to the minimum if that happens. I'll leave the full debate on the amendment for the de debate on the amendment, but we'll just say our amendment will put the housing revenue account in a much healthier position to both take advantage of the room for manoeuvre we currently have and to weather future storms. And that in the majority of cases, the rent rise will be covered automatically by housing benefit or universal credit. And in, many and in any case, amounts to less than a pound a week higher than 2015. How many of the thousands of families sitting on the waiting list and in private rented accommodation can say that? Our other amendments also try to improve the budget and in some sense, get the administration to put its money where its mouth is. I think we have general agreement now that a workplace parking le levy is the right thing to do. Generally, as we see here in the council, the perk of free parking is only given to the best paid or the highest in the hierarchy. So this will not lead to any imposition on those who can't afford it. I completely take the point that we would not want to make the change this year when there's so much unpredictability for business between COVID and Brexit. But now is the right time to start taking preparatory steps. It took four years for the council to paint some double yellow lines by the cricket ground. I honestly don't think moving too fast is the thing we have to fear here. And we will never move forward if we don't start. Our SIL amendment deals with money that has been given to the city by developers so that we can assuage the impacts of development on our people. It is not intended to subsidize the profits of future developers, although that is often how we see it used. Development on the whole, makes things busier, noisier, and more polluted as it increases traffic. It often eats into green space. Through lockdown, we've seen how much we really value our green spaces and our quiet byways. Our amendment would create a strategic fund for their prote protection and promotion. It aims to put our parks on a more secure footing through work, for example, on accessibility or providing utilities for a small park cafe concession, which could then provide income for future maintenance of the park. It also aims to fund some action where the administration has agreed principle in words on school streets and livable neighborhoods. So in short, I'm not violently opposed to this budget. I think it could be improved by the amendments we've proposed. That's why I contacted the mayor and the leader of the Labour group as soon as our amendments got equalities and finance approval and asked them to consider accepting them because that would clear the way to us swallowing any smaller misgivings and supporting the budget as a whole. I didn't hear back from them, but I have spoken to other members of the Labour group, particularly thank you, Craig Cheney. seconds left. Thank you. So thank you for your time and for hearing me out. But I wait and watch with interest to see what comes of that. Thank you very much. I'd now like to call upon Councillor Hopkins to respond to the Mayor's budget proposals on behalf of the Liberal Democrat group, 
Councillor, you have up to seven minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. An old slogan in common use was, believe what they do, not what they say. Never has it been so true or important. The Mayor speaks very confidently and sends out very expensively produced press releases. I have on several occasions been asked for translations uh, by the media because they haven't got a clue what's actually been said. But very often that is actually impossible. The reality is actually being cloaked. A year ago in the lead up to the cancelled elections, so it wasn't just Bristol Energy that was exposed by this, we had the proud announcement from the mayor repeated in the media that he was achieving his pledge of 800 affordable homes a year. Reading a little closer, which most people who have other things in their lives do not, it turned out to be a projection. These projections, as officers openly proclaim, are subject to optimism bias. The actual numbers built during this mayor's term are 199, 188, 260 and 312, an average of 243, with a best of 312. Uh, you wouldn't uh, think that was the case compared to a target of 800 listening to the mayor, would you? Uh, the total number of new homes has declined from 1994 steadily to 1350 during the same period. The 2000 total was ironically being effectively hit before he got started, not now. Still he proclaims better than ever before. Well, in the three years before a mayor and immediately before that, the figures were total built 6,502, average 2,167, and affordable homes 1,495, average 498. So where was this best ever? In the years before the mayor's system, we had mainly Lib Dem administrations with a short spell of minority Labour control. All parties had influence in one form or another. Let's have a look at a few other areas comparing prior to the mayor's system and earlier. Previously, new libraries uh, uh, built and investment in libraries. Now, under the mayor's system, repeated attacks on the library network. Previously, new schools were built and standards raised dramatically in our schools. What we have now is send provision chaotic, secondary pupils being sent out of Bristol because of lack of places. Recycling rates actually quadrupled uh, during that period and Bristol was a national environmental leader. Well, it's bumping along at the moment uh, and it still hasn't sunk enough to take us from being the top major city, but that's got nothing to do with the present administration. And it's so desperate they're even looking to transfer staff out uh, from the council to Bristol Waste. That's the best idea. Previously, we had parkies in every park, national and international wards, 40 new rejuvenated play parks. Well, park keepers are now reduced, budget slashed, and there's not enough money for basic repairs. We previously had productive partnerships with all our neighbours, uh, Cuba neighbours, neighbouring councils, with record national transport funds attracted. Now we have a war with the neighbours and isolationism. Local budgets uh, were available before with decision making by local councillors. Now the local budgets have actually been abolished and it's impossible to get a lot of minor scheme, local schemes through and get them done. And we had funding and opening of new swimming pools and sports facilities. Now we just have a closure agenda. The mayor will, of course, say that none of these reversals are his fault. After all, we did not have to contend with losing £50 million on an energy company or having a revolving door for chief executives who left with taxpayers' cash or having to pay 40 and 50 a day uh, to a manager stroke consultant who killed off the arena, brought forward popular plans uh, for the Cumberland Basin, um, I'm not sure about that, uh, is involved with a planned office building at Temple Meads, amongst other triumphs. What has happened to the much needed and overdue East Bristol School behind Temple Meads, by the way? Officers are protected from being named. This particular person is not an officer and appears to be completely unaccountable. 
Neither would we have to contend with the mayor's office costing £1 million a year, or the record SRI payments made to Labour councillors, or record spending on an overblown department uh, for information or information control system that excludes councillors and the public. Congratulations to do though, to these last two, as they have combined to produce record numbers of entries in the Rotten Borough section of Private Eye. Still, we should listen again to the wise words of the late old Labour MP, Paul Flynn. With new Labour, the future is always the same, rosy glow. It is the past that keeps changing. In this case, we need to recommend everyone to examine the promises made five years ago by the Mayor and compare them with today's reality. Thank you. Thank you very much. We now move to section four of the procedure, a report on behalf of Overview and Scrutiny Management Board was published as a supplement online yesterday. I would now like to invite Councillor Clark to present comments on behalf of the OSM Board and Resources Scrutiny Commission. Councillor, you have up to seven minutes, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, Members will have received our report, which includes an appendix uh, containing answers to written questions. So I only intend to talk briefly about a few areas of particular concern. Members will be pleased to know that I won't be using up all my allotted time. So between June and December 2020, the Resource Commission and the Task and Finish Group met with officers on nine occasions to do two things. The first was to consider the immediate impact of COVID um, and we looked at that. Um, and the other was to look at decisions and priorities leading up to these papers that have been produced for the budget and preparation for this budget, uh, for this full council meeting. Before I say anything else, I'd like to offer uh, our, our sin sincere thanks as a group to the officers who helped us with real understanding and good grace. You know who you are, Denise, Mike, Tian, Joe, Lucy, Bronwyn and Dan. Um, Marge Hickman mentioned wizardry and I think that's about right. Also many thanks to the cabinet members who attended our meetings. As chair, I would also like to offer my personal thanks to the other members of this group who managed to make our meetings reasonably concise, hopefully useful and relatively cheerful. As to the first of the tasks that I mentioned at the start, uh, the impact of COVID. I don't, want to, I don't want to dwell a lot on the direct financial impact of COVID as that's not the main topic for this meeting. Although of course it is intertwined with it and underlies it. However, members need to understand that the loss of income from various income sources will persist for a number of years as the financial impacts of the pandemic work through the system. Nevertheless, overall, I think it would be reasonable to state that our um, our position is currently relatively stable. Uh, as to this budget, the areas that we wanted to highlight are, are in the report, but I would just like to mention a few now. So the housing revenue account, the HRA. Um, members had quite long discussions regarding rents on council houses. I know this has been mentioned already a couple of times and will be discussed later in this meeting, but we were worried about it. Uh, a number of members did query the decision not to increase rents as they were concerned there would be real pressures on the HRA reserves in three or four years time. And really it was unclear how those pressures would be relieved. So adult social care. We of course always understood that there would be a huge financial impact of COVID on adult social care. And so it has proved. What we're perhaps more concerned about was the underlying non-COVID overspend. We understand uh, the pressures that have brought this about, but we discuss the budget processing, the budget process. As we all know that we have overspends pretty much year after year. I've been doing this for a number of years and certainly there's been an overspend every year I've been doing it. I'm not sure we ever really had a convincing answer as to why there was a problem with the budgeting process, but we were told that the council was carrying out a transformation plan which include reducing the cost of services, but this plan had been delayed by COVID, which is of course understandable. Helen Holland, who was kind enough to attend one of our meetings, was brave enough to put her head above the parapet and state 
that she was confident that the amount budgeted for this year was a more realistic amount. I think that's one for next year's group to look at. Um, retention of business rates. So we've, we've done well from being a part of the business rates retention scheme, but that could potentially play against us now as COVID really impacts on business rates in our high streets. The scheme has been reviewed and it's not really known what will happen even in the medium term. This is a clear risk area for the future, which could have a real impact on us. Uh, dedicated schools grant. Well, uh, an area of concern was the rising deficit in the DSG. This year's deficit, combined with previous year's deficit, gives a total of 11 and a half million, almost 11 and a half million. The problem, as it appears to us, is there seems to be no clear plan as, a, as to how this deficit, which largely arises from special needs provisions, would be addressed other than appealing to Westminster. Um, this worried us. We discussed the business plans of the companies, the council's companies, but again, I, I don't really feel this is the place to discuss the detail of these, although there are some interesting answers contained in the appendix of our report. Um, on one specific point, it was confirmed that all monies granted to Gorham Homes are repayable loans and also interest is payable on them. They're not grants or subsidies. Um, I think I'll leave it there, but as I've said, I recommend that members read our report and the answers to the written questions if they've not done so already. Thank you very much. Thank you. I would now like to ask Mayor Rees if you'd like to take the opportunity to respond. You have up to seven minutes, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I mean, to be honest, I, I think much of uh, what we've just experienced is um, kind of what we anticipated. We have this kind of hyperbolic um, description of a threat to uh, democracy. I actually have friends who have fled to live in this country and friends who are overseas right now who are fighting for democracy and and uh, to to you know to, to try and you know raise that argument here is just uh, silly. Uh, the fact is, it's it's the invisibility of decision making that used to exist in this authority when I grew up in the city, underserved by this Bristol City Council, and when I worked for the authority as director of the local strategic partnership. Um, and actually, I could see faces on the screen who were in uh, deputy leadership roles when I was the director of the LSP. And I, you know, I, I, I wouldn't use this uh, platform to uh, share the perceptions of the low quality of uh, political leadership at the time amongst officers and city partners who ceased to start to participate, ceased participating in the LSP because of the poor quality of uh, leadership and their kind of, uh, and their sense that nothing ever got done in this local authority. So we just have to have a bit of a reality check on ourselves here and a bit of humility, actually, that uh, there, was, there was no halcyon day in Bristol City uh, Council's history uh, when we were pumping out uh, uh, delivery. I mean, outside of that and the, the uh, the, the moral outrage that uh, that we get um, at the beginning, uh, the usual uh, repost, uh, it is what it is. Uh, I mean, look, our point has been: look at what we've uh, look at what we've done. Thousands of houses, we've prioritised. Uh, we've had our children fed. We fantastic uh, new dawn in our approach to domestic violence, supporting people coming back into the criminal justice system. Uh, we've secured Channel Four uh, for Bristol, and dare I say. We've avoided the city ending up trying to open up a 200 million pound arena or plus what it would have cost in the middle of a pandemic, which I think many people actually voted for, which are an absolute financial catastrophe. Uh, so, um, you know, this is our budget. This is our offer to the city. I think people have focused more on delivery than side swipes within the uh, Bristol City Council. And uh, I'm proud of our team uh, for, for all they've done to, to deliver this. Thank you. We now start at section five of the procedure, the constitution of a, a consideration of amendments to the budget. We will now work through the amendments proposed by each of the four political groups. Each amendment will be moved, seconded and debated in the order shown in the agenda papers. For each of the amendments, for each of the amendments, there will be one vote. 
in terms of each vote, an amendment that is carried shall be carried by a simple majority of those voting. As we move through the amendments, the Chief Financial Officer will advise as necessary if certain amendments are impacted due to an earlier amendment being carried. Once we have dealt with all the amendments, the Chief Financial Officer will confirm the overall position in terms of any amendments that are carried. I would now like to move to amendment number one, the Liberal Democrat Group Amendment. So the amendment for the, the first amendment, the Liberal Democrat Group, this amendment involves both, both revenue and capital, and there will be one vote at the end of the debate. I would now like to call upon Councillor Kent to move the Liberal Democrat amendment. Councillor, you have up to five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, I move the Liberal Democrat amendment to the Mayor's budget. We propose to invest an extra £19 million into our children and their future. Our amendment would see us cut spending on the Mayor's office back to a reasonable level and invest that money into special educational needs, into parks and play, safer travel, a new swimming pool for the people of East Bristol, uh, a long promised but never delivered uh, uh, pool by this administration. In moving this amendment, we do not pretend that this resolves these issues. We do though seek to set a course for this council and this city, demonstrate that improvement in frontline services is a choice that we can all make. We once again propose a fund to improve and extend support to schools, to add to the good work already done by the council around autism, expand on this and provide additional support and expertise to allow young people to thrive and receive the support they need. Through improved early intervention, we can reduce the pressure being felt through applications for EHCPs, expanded support to schools around autism, as well as specific learning difficulties such as dyslexia. Now, last year, Labour members chose to vote this down. They presented us with dodgy maths to justify why they should not help children in the most need. Now we know there are hundreds of children unable to access the special school place they are entitled to. We've already seen the budget of the mayor, uh, uh, the budget of the mayor struck down once by the court due to the attempt by Labour councillors to cut millions in funding from our most vulnerable children. One wonders how the court would feel about hundreds of children left without a place in, in a special school which the law entitles them. I suppose there are lawyers sharpening their nibs right now. Which comes on to our next proposal. Additional capital funding for special school provision. Once again, voted down by Labour last year. Now the crisis has worsened. Now hundreds more children are left stranded without a suitable, lawful place of education. Do you want to act? Our amendment accelerates the capital programme for special education provision. In July 2019, you were warned clearly you had not made enough provision for special school places. Again, in August, another warning was ignored. Now we have the Director of Education writing to us all the day before this vote to explain many children will not have a special school place, a place they need, a place they're entitled to, a place they deserve. Officers have stated our amendment will ensure there is sufficient capacity and that they can deliver high quality environments. We propose a major investment into parks and children's play areas. Our proposal would see an extra £1 million spent on maintenance of our play areas, tripling the maintenance programme for the city. Left in disrepair, the budget for maintenance of the, of the city's 140 play areas is to be slashed to half. Half that, by the way, are the salary of the mayor's favourite consultant. Have a think about that, what your priority is. One consultant or 150 play areas fit for children to play in. Without doubt, the condition of our play areas are some of the worst in the country a disgrace. Parents, especially those who cannot afford expensive venues, rely on playgrounds in our parks for their children. In Bristol, they're treated with no swings, taped off slides and broken roundabouts. We could, we could fund up to 35 renewed or brand new play areas with this amendment. 
We'll invest in the park. We will also invest in the parks those players sit in, an extra two million pounds to raise quality of our parks. Officers have been clear. This investment will make a significant impact on, on high health inequality in our city. A good reason to support it. How will we pay for this? Simply ensure that we reduce unnecessary expenditure at the heart of this council and use unallocated funds. The cost of the mayor's office has ballooned over the last few years. We're all now aware of the £90,000 contract to monitor us all on social media. Let's ensure every penny we spend is spent wisely. But we've already heard the attack, haven't we? Apparently, we're going to sack key workers. Key workers like the mayor's enforcer. 30 seconds left, councillor. That, that appears to be Labour's definition of a key worker. It is absolutely insulting to the key workers of this city who've been working for the last year. Uh, I find it truly atrocious, that attack. I hope maybe uh, that will be withdrawn from the Labour group. So come on, let's make a decision, guys, together. What do we want to prioritise? Do we want to prioritise our children, our parks, the schooling for those children? Or do we want to prioritise the now, please. I hope you'll support this amendment. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would now like to call upon Councillor Hopkins to second the amendment. Thank you. Second the amendment, reserving my remarks. Thank you. I would now like to call upon Councillor Asher Craig to speak on behalf of the Labour Group. You have up to three minutes. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. So let's call out this amendment for what it is. Cynical ploy by the Lib Dems, which further underscores the fact that over the last five years, they continue to be bereft of any actual ideas or policy changes that are really going to improve the life chances for all of Bristol's citizens. This proposed motion to budget is just another poor example of you not having done your homework and having nothing else better to offer this city. This motion calls for more money for SEND. May I remind you that it is a known fact uh, that SEND funding is often very complicated formula and is transferred from other parts of funding for schools. Councillor Keane has uh, come in front of this council and cabinet on several occasions and most recently made a clear commitment and decision to invest over half a million pounds in or send provision to increase casework staff, as well as all key aspects of capital spend around send in the city. You then suddenly care about our parks by proposing an additional 125K for only two years to address repairs. Let's not forget who sold off our green spaces. Oh yeah, it was the Lib Dems. Considering your campaign on Jubilee Tour, which whilst you were in power, you signed the death warrant, warrant on, you have quite a habit of campaigning for one thing and doing the other whilst in power. It would also seem like you have no principles whatsoever, but then you were the party that betrayed the country by posing up to the Tories in your desperation for power at any cost. No difference here with these amendments. This motion is what it is, desperate and opportunistic, making out that this Labour administration does not care about investing in our children and our parks. We secured over a million pounds to deliver a new vision for our parks and green spaces, which will deliver unprecedented in investment into our parks and green spaces over the coming years and not at the cost of the public purse. Also, let me remind you, Labour improves parks, the Lib Dems sell them off. Let me jog your memory, uh, as I know that Councillor uh, Hopkins and Councillor Kent suffer from short memory loss. In 2010, the Lib Dems, when you were in power, you made a decision to sell off 47 parks and green spaces. Let me list some of them. You have 30 seconds Drive, left, Councillor. Road, Maple Close, Cook Street. I could go on, but the list of sites sold for development by the Lib Dems is too long. And as you've heard, I've only got maybe 20 seconds left. These budget amendments are what they are, derisory. You would want to cut consultation to PR and comms teams. Cutting consultation means cutting out the voice completely of those communities. We have been proud you to draw increase to a close now then, please, and just demonstrate Thank you. that your party are completely Thank out of tune and out of step with Thank the city. You. I would now I, like I to call it here. Um, I haven't ended, but I will. I would now like to call upon Councillor Morris to speak on behalf of the Conservative group. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. 
The Lib Dem amendment seeks to tackle some of the uh, deliberate underinvestment into the items in Bristol that many residents whom we represent want to see improved. Our much neglected parks, improved um, in, and an increasing number of sports facilities, the provision of uh, additional places for send children to unwind far too many years of neglect and enhance cycling infrastructure. And how will this be paid for? From revenue, by trimming some of the uh, the mayor's support function, his inner sanctum, you know, the, the mayor's office team and his communications machine. And on the capital side, by reducing the amount of money set aside for contingency for major projects. At first, I thought this was a very risky approach, having seen the uh, litany of failure with almost every major project in Bristol during the mayor's tenure and before, uh, regularly running significantly over budget and often late. However, we owe it to our children and the families to provide for their future. This motion goes some way towards doing that, and also by ensuring funds from strategic SIL can reach the forgotten suburbs. As in the words of the officers, significant upgrades are simply not currently possible because of very low levels of community infrastructure levy uh, contributions from developers. My group supports this amendment. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd now like to call upon Councillor Thomas to speak on behalf of the Green Group. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Councillor Thomas, you need to unmute yourself. Yeah. There are lots of relatively small but valuable proposals in the Lib Dem budget amendments. In the revenue budget, this is mainly in the area of play park repairs, special educational needs, reducing the public relations of the council and reducing the costs of the mayor's office. While I'm not necessarily supportive of the specific mechanics of the proposals in these areas, and some of my colleagues are even less so, the targeted savings seem reasonable to fund the worthwhile spending proposals. On the capital budget, I welcome additional spending on leisure facilities and play equipment particularly in areas where SIL levels are low. I'd like more explanation from the proposer of the motion on how the 7.1 million spend will turn into 250 special school places, what impact, if any, there will be on the revenue budget arising from this, and how this proposal fits with the, with the overall required improvements in our SEND approach that we know are needed. So overall, I and a number of my colleagues will be supporting these proposals will probably want to engage in a longer conversation about the detail of implementation. Thank you. Thank you very much. That brings to an end the debate. Councillor Hopkins, as seconder of the amendment, would you like to respond to the amendment before we move to the vote? You have a maximum of three minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, I welcome the support from the Conservative and, and the Green groups. Uh, I, I would, would have hoped but the Labour Party would in actual fact have a conscience on this, but it doesn't appear so. I, I'm not surprised, but saddened by the totally inaccurate and misleading remarks from Councillor Craig. Uh, when I was in charge of parks and open spaces in the environment, we faced a position where over a hundred uh, play parks had actually been closed in previous years by the Labour Party because of neglect. We invested heavily and produced 42 new and rejuvenated play parks. Our parks, we actually increased the park space that we had within Bristol by acquiring Stoke Park. I also wish to make comment regarding her attack upon Jubilee Pool because it was an attack by this administration. She knows perfectly well that the cross-party working group investigated this matter thoroughly and sent in papers which actually showed that the decision to close Jubilee Pool with a view to opening up Hingrove was taken by the Labour administration in 2008. That is factual documents. You can have a look at them if it's not too much trouble for you. In 2010, when we took back over the administration, we continued and delivered the uh, Hingrove uh, facility which was a re sub-regional facility. And basically we had to do quite a lot of work to make the numbers add up, which they hadn't when we inherited them. 
What we did, though, was take away the threat to Jubilee Pool and actually invested in it. All of this is thoroughly acknowledged by the cross-party working group, and I would suggest that it be in, in order for Councillor Craig to educate herself on that matter before we make any, any further outrageous speeches. Thank you. Thank you. I would now like to call upon the Cabinet Member, Craig Cheney, would you like to respond to the, the to respond prior to the vote? Thank you. You have up to yeah, three minutes. Thanks. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. Just to just kind of rise above the, the tip for tat that's going on at the moment and, and talk just for a minute about, about the actual amendment. So, so we all want to spend money on things that sound good and we want to spend less money on things that sound bad, right? That's that's a given, isn't it? What when you actually look beneath the, the, the bonnet of what the what the good and the bad are, though, what we're actually talking about is reducing money that we spend on consulting with the public. Now, that budget's probably going to go up, actually, as we embark further on citizens' assemblies and so on. We're probably going to spend more money on talking to the public. Democracy has a price, and we're, we're willing to pay it. Um, on, the, on the capital budget, so, so we've got a £900 million capital budget with a £60 million contingency. Enough, but could probably, be, could probably use more. Um, you want to take a significant chunk out of that, undermining the whole capital program. That capital program isn't all fluffy nonsense. That is building school places. That is building swimming pools. That is doing the things that, that you want to take money from the contingency to spend. So for me, as was pointed out, it's a bit of a trap, isn't it? Vote against this and you're voting against SEND and you're voting against parks and so on. Of course, we're delivering on all these things. We're not voting against them for that reason. We're voting against them because the funding sources aren't real. Thank you. I would now like to move to the vote on the Liberal Democrat amendment. The amendment summary it is now going to be displayed upon the screen. Thank you. There will be one vote, which will be both for the revenue and capital amendments and elements, sorry. We will now move to the vote. This will be a roll call you are voting on the Liberal Democrat Amendment and the names will be read out in alphabetical order. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Councillor Don Alexander. Against. Councillor Leslie Alexander. Support. Councillor Beach. Against. Councillor Bowden-Jones. Against. Councillor Bradshaw. Against. Councillor Brain. Against. Councillor Bolton. For. Councillor Brook. Against. Councillor Breckles. Against. Councillor Carey. Councillor Carey. Councillor Cheney. Against. Councillor Barry Clark. Against. Councillor Stephen Clark. For. Councillor Clough. For. Councillor Comley. For. Councillor Craig. Against. Councillor Chris Davies. For. Councillor Denya. Stain. Councillor Dudd. Against. Councillor Eddy. Or. Councillor English. Or. Councillor Fodor. Or. Councillor Godwin. Against. Councillor Goggin. Against. Councillor Gollop. Or. Councillor Gulandris. Or. Councillor Hans. Or. Councillor Hickman. Against. Councillor Hiscott. For. Councillor Holland. Against. Councillor Hopkins. For. Councillor Jackson. Against. Councillor Jammer. Against. Councillor Johnson. Against. Councillor Jones. For. Councillor Keane. Against. Councillor Kent. For. Councillor Khan. For. Councillor Kirk. Against. Councillor Lake. For. Councillor Lovell. Against. Councillor Massey. Against. Councillor Mead. Against. Councillor Melias. 
Four. Councillor Morris. Four. Councillor Negus. Four. Councillor O'Rourke. Four. Councillor Pierce. Against. Councillor Phipps. Against. Councillor Pickersgill. Against. Councillor Quarterly. Four. Councillor Radford. Four. Councillor Rippington. Against. Councillor Sargent. Against. Councillor Shah. Against. Councillor Smith. Four. Councillor Thomas. Four. Councillor Threlfall. Against. Councillor Tinknell. Against. Councillor Wellington. Against. Councillor Weston. Four. Councillor Whittle. Councillor Whittle. Councillor okay. Window. Four. Councillor Councillor Wright. Four. Mayor Reese. Against. A Councillor Whittle. Against. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Carey. Four. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Can we have it displayed on the screen? And thank you very much. So the result mm. is 34, 34 against, one abstain, and two apologies. So the amendment is fails. Thank you very much. I suggest now that we take a 15 minute refreshment break. Please, can I ask everybody to return at uh, 3.35? Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Right. Well, we won the first one, just. Yeah, by three. You might want to...
Thank you very much and welcome back everybody. I would now like to move to amendment number two, which is the Labour Group Amendment. Um, we will continue obviously with the all amendments received. This amendment involves revenue only and there will be one vote at the end of the debate. I would now like to call upon Councillor Don Alexander to move for the Labour amendment. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I would like to begin by paying tribute to our neighbourhood enforcement team who have worked tirelessly, tirelessly throughout this pandemic, helping to keep us safe. I also would like to say thank you to the employees of Bristol Waste for emptying my bins at 7am last week when it was dark and minus five degrees centigrade. We mustn't forget as well the big tidy crew who are doing sterling work all over the city. It's also really positive to see the amount of litter picking going on in communities. And I know that many people are waiting like me for an easing in the lockdown so that we can really ramp up our activities. I want to uh, thank a neighbour of mine, Zach Jones, lives just up the road, who is the city's unofficial chief litter picker. He attends almost all litter picks around the city. And uh, he, he does actually report to me as well to, as to which councillors are in attendance. Despite an enormous amount of educational work, however, there remains a small minority of residents and businesses who continue to ignore the feelings of their neighbours and fellow residents for whatever and perhaps a number of different reasons. At a time when the mental health of the nation has been terribly compromised by the pandemic and the government's poor response, uh, then we, at the moment, the council must do everything it can to give our residents a clean and attractive environment to live in. As an organisation, we do need to be really clear about the relationship between our work on enforcement and our work on mental health. When empowered, enforcement contributes both to the city's economy and to its public health. Whilst the government refuses to fund local authorities properly, it isn't going to be easy to find the resources to do the amount of enforcement work that residents and councillors are requesting. And we all Thank know you from have 30 seconds left. Thank, thank you. you. We all know from our inboxes how really important enforcement is to our citizens and how it impacts on them when it's not happening properly. In this, um, this amendment provides for seven new enforcement officers. It's a modest start down the road of improving things, but I hope it will receive the support now, please. of all councillors. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd now like to call upon Councillor Pickerskill to second the amendment. Thank you. Yeah, I second the amendment, reserving my remarks. Thank you. Thank you. I would now like to call upon Councillor Weston to speak on behalf of the Conservative Group. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you very much, my Lord Mayor. Uh, can I congratulate Councillor Alexander on so adroitly moving uh, a motion that could unite the Chamber and simultaneously delivering a speech designed to split it. It is quite an achievement. Um, I also find myself in the extraordinary situation, dare I say almost unique, with uh, agreeing with a proposal uh, that Council Alexander has put forward. But as the former Shadow Home Secretary would say, a broken clock is right once a day. So congratulations. I do support the content of it. Um, I'm not, not necessarily, should we say, the comments that you just uh, used. Um, but I have to say, I'm, I'm feeling a little, a little dirty for having to say those words, Council Alexander. I agree with you, but no doubt that fills you with as much shock and dread as uh, though this was due to myself. Um, we have a real problem with littering in the city. As someone that organizes uh, litter picks and joins uh, Zach Jones as well on his, 
It is everywhere. A, a, a volunteer near me uh, two days ago collected 80 bags of feces, the, the dog feces dressing, hung up and thrown in the bushes and just left there 80 bags in 30 minutes. So although we fully support this, and my comment here is on the delivery of it, we have to make sure those enforcement officers don't just spend their time in the city centre. There are an awful lot of green spaces that are being widely used, especially in lockdown, where we are meant to keep local, and they are being used an awful lot. And there's a lot of bad practice there. And so those enforcement officers have to leave the centre, they have to go into the suburbs. So congratulations on your uh, amendment, Councillor Alexander. Um, must work harder when it comes to your speech. Thank you very much, my Lord Mayor. Thank you. I would now like to call upon Councillor Hans to speak on behalf of the Green Group. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you. I doubt it'll take that long. Um, yes, well, we're, we are a bit baffled by this, one, I have to say, because it does seem a bit odd that Labour are amending their own budget. Um, you know, kind of wonder if this is a budget line that slipped down the back of the sofa or something, was only just retrieved at the last minute. Um, a more cynical of us might suspect this was in some way controversial. So we're putting an amendment as an attempt to share the blame if it all goes wrong, but I can't see that either. Who knows? Like I said, it's all a bit odd. Um, on the one hand, what's not to love about employing more enforcement officers? I mean, Lord knows we are crying out for them, and especially the small army of volunteers that working in wars just like mine in Redland. And they could really do with a backup, quite frankly. Um, on the other hand, it's worth noting, I think, that the officer response is decidedly unenthusiastic. And it's pointing out that they are unlikely to cover their own costs by pulling in a sufficient number of fines. Um, I was surprised to see there isn't any data on that one, because I seem to recall, correct if I'm wrong, but I seem to recall Mark put in you know, a similar amendment many moons ago under the last administration for three officers in an attempt to cover their own costs, but we'll let that slide. Um, anyway, I'm not going to propose this meeting. I'm not going to prolong this meeting any longer than necessary by holding forth for my full three minutes. You'll be delighted to hear. Um, bearing in mind that this may well actually help achieve demonstrably cleaner streets that we've been hearing about, we'll support this one um, with a degree of confusion. But there we go. Thank you very much. I would now like to call upon Councillor Carey to speak on behalf of the Liberal Democrat group. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. Um, I'm sure we all fully endorse Councillor Alexander's comments regarding Bristol City Council employees who turn out in all weathers to work for our city. The Liberal Democrat group supports this amendment. However, may I urge the leading party, whichever that may be after May's elections, to utilise these officers more efficiently than hitherto. It's well known that well over 90% of the monies gathered by enforcement officers previously was from individuals in the city central area from the heinous crime of dropping cigarette butts and, and tissues. Well, the outer suburbs, uh, in the outer suburbs, cowboy rubbish collectors earn themselves a very good living by fly tipping in the lanes and byways of our city. In these areas, fly tipping is endemic. I was yesterday afternoon in Iron Mold Lane in Brissenden East, and the ditches are literally full to a depth of several feet of fly tip, tin can, and everything. Eventually, of course, this detritus is collected by uh, Bristol Waste to the to hundreds of tons of it to the tunes of tens, if not hundreds of thousands of pounds. So we ask that these new waste and litter enforcement officers are urged to move away from the comfort of the city centre to the outlying suburbs and take the necessary action to apprehend and get these low-life fly tippers caught and fined or even improved, imprisoned. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you. That brings to an end the debate. Councillor Pickerskill, a seconder of the amendment, would you like to respond to the amendment before we go to the vote. You have three minutes, Councillor. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm tempted to say I've got rubbish speech again, um, but this is a serious issue, really, for the 82% of Bristol residents who, in the Quality of Life survey, said that street litter is a problem in their area. But like everything else, it's a problem with equality's implications. And I noticed that 94% think it's a problem in Eastern, 92% Lawrence Hill and Hartcliffe, 
um, 91% in Southmead, but only 71% in Clifton. And the cry in our areas, as always, as rubbish piles up, this wouldn't happen in Clifton. And I know the picture is complicated, but the picture is there is some truth in this. We've got evidence of vans going into a car park in Barton Hill, opening their back doors and dumping the contents regularly. We know people drive into Bristol and dump their stuff by the bins in Stapleton Road. They don't live anywhere near, but they think that people in our area either don't mind or that they don't deserve a decent environment. We've got high numbers of HMOs, and we know that landlords dump the contents off the flats on the pavement when they change tenants. I actually caught somebody when I drove through Lawrence Hill, took a photo of them and their number plate. One of the most rewarding things I've done in my time as a councillor. As Don said, our um, enforcement team are diligent, but they're spread really, really thin. I was a bit shocked to find out that we've got the equivalent of four officers working across the city on waste at any time. Nottingham, known for their clean streets, have 50 officers. They invest 1.4 million on this a year, which works out at £4.35 per head of the population, and we spend 25p per head. So it is time to invest. We know it takes a lot of hard work to find fly tippers. You have to go through all the bins, find addresses and everything else. And I'm sure some people are very grateful that in the year to March 2020, um, 3GS fined 5,854 people for cigarette butt offences. Um, but that doesn't really help us with the freezers and mattresses that appear on our streets every day. We know what works, again, as Councillor Alexander says, it's a combination of education, community development and enforcement. We've got Tidy BS5 in our area, which was set up by Marg and the amazing Steve Woods, who diligently reports at least 25 five fly tips a day. Um, and it works well, and we're creating action plans to tackle hot spots. But we need to be brave now. We need to try something new. The big tidy worked. It had a huge impact on our area. It shows we've got the creativity and the management skills to do these things in-house. Fly tipping might be hard to resolve. Actually, you have 30 but, seconds left. Thank you. They can um, clean up front gardens and, and issue FPNs. We need to have high expectations of every area in Bristol. Not, we all want planters and hanging baskets rather than graffiti and mattresses. So hopefully this targeted action will make a difference and deliver a clean city no matter where anyone lives. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. I'd now like to call upon, upon the Cabinet member, Councillor Pearce. Would you like to respond prior to moving to the vote? You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, so we've been, it's in my, my time as Cabinet member, I've been overseeing the delivery of the Harcliffe Way Household Reuse and Recycling Centre. Um, and anyone who's had calls to drive past the site in the last few months will have seen that contractors have been on site and have been starting the delivery of that. Uh, this will reduce congestion at other recycling centres. Um, and I understand perhaps by as much as 40% at Days Road. We've increased the scale of the fines that we levy for environmental offences, and they're now sitting at or very close to the maximum level that we're able to, to levy. Whenever I speak to elected members and citizens, they always say, that's all well and good, but can we have more enforcement? Well, I'm happy to stand behind this amendment. Yes, this gets my blessing. Um, on a personal note, I'd like to thank Don for raising the issue around mental health and the impact that environmental crime can have on mental health. And I'd also like to admit that I'm not okay. And it's okay to not be okay. And if you're not okay, reach out. We have support that can help you. COVID has been a terrible thing, but I'd like to say that it hasn't robbed me entirely of my sense of fun. And so I'll be sitting here with my pen and my notepad, interested to see who, if anyone votes against this amendment, or the budget that hopefully will contain this amendment. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you very much. I would now like to move to voting on the Labour amendment. The amendment summary will be displayed on the screen now. 
This vote involves the revenue element only. We will now move to the vote. This will be a roll call. You are voting on the Labour amendment and the names will be read out in alphabetical order. Thank you. Councillor Don Alexander. Four. Councillor Leslie Alexander. Four. Councillor Beach. Four. Councillor Bowden Jones. Four. Councillor Bradshaw. Four. Councillor Brain. Four. Councillor Bolton. Four. Councillor Brook. Four. Councillor Brackles. Four. Councillor Carey. Four. Councillor Cheney. Four. Councillor Barry Clark. Four. Councillor Stephen Clark. Four. Councillor Clough. Four. Councillor Comley. Four. Councillor Craig. Four. Councillor Chris Davies. Four. Councillor Denya. Four. Councillor Dud. Four. Councillor Eddie. Four. Councillor English. Councillor English. Four. Four. Councillor Fodor. Four. Councillor Godwin. Four. Councillor Goggin. Four. Councillor Gollop. Four. Councillor Gulandris. Four. Councillor Hans. Four. Councillor Hickman. Four. Councillor Hiscott. Four. Councillor Holland. Four. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councillor Jackson. Four. Councillor Jammer. Four. Councillor Johnson. Four. Councillor Jones. Four. Councillor Keane. Four. Councillor Kent. Four. Councillor Khan. Four. Councillor Kirk. Four. Councillor Lake. Four. Councillor, Council, Councillor Lovell. Four. Councillor Massey. Four. Councillor Mead. Four. Councillor Melias. Four. Councillor Morris. Four. Councillor Negus. Four. Councillor O'Rourke. Four. Councillor Pierce. Four. Councillor Phipps. Four. Councillor Pickersgill. Four. Councillor Quarterly. Four. Councillor Radford. Four. Councillor Rippington. Four. Councillor Sargent. Four. Councillor Shah. Four. Councillor Smith. Four. Councillor Thomas. Four. Councillor Threlfall. Four. Councillor Tinknell. Four. Councillor Wellington. Four. Councillor Weston. Four. Councillor Whittle. Councillor Whittle. Four. Councillor <laughs> Windows. Four. <laughs> Four. Councillor Wright. Four. Mayor Reese. Four. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you very much. Um, we have the result displayed on this screen. We have 65 for zero against zero abstentions and two apologies. So the amendment is carried. Thank you. I would now like to move to amendment number three, which is the Green Group Amendment. This amendment involves the housing revenue account called the HRA, and there will be one vote at the end of the debate. I would firstly like to call upon Councillor Denyer to move the Green Group HRA Amendment. You have three minutes, thank you. Thank you. This amendment builds on Paul Smith's amendment last year and seeks to unlock millions of pounds for upgrading and building council homes. Specifically, it will boost the council's housing budget by 8.5 million over the next five years and 51 million over the course of the council's 30 year housing plan, providing critical funding for repairs and warmer homes and leveraging borrowing from government to build more council homes. It does this by increasing council rents by 1% plus inflation, 
that is just 87 pence per week from where rent, rents were in 2015. I understand concerns about putting up rents, but for most residents, it is covered by benefits. Therefore, central government pays the increase. And we've already heard from some council tenants that they'd welcome this rise to get repairs done sooner and insulate their homes, bringing lower energy bills and carbon emissions. In fact, Here's what one tenant said to Bristol Post when she heard that the council's current plan is not to raise rents. She said, I understand the dichotomy you are facing and that you assume that not raising council rents now will help the poorest and most vulnerable in the city recover financially from COVID-19. This is a false economy. Not raising council rents will cost tenants more in the long run through heating homes with inadequate insulation, heating systems, windows and doors. Better still, because of the way council house funding works, this small increase in revenue from the housing department would unlock millions of pounds more in government borrowing to build new council homes. The thousands of families on the waiting list are stuck in expensive private rented accommodation. Average private rents in Bristol are three times higher than council rents. So the more council housing we can build and renovate, the more people we can get out of those expensive privately rented houses and flats and into council homes. Bristol can't afford not to do this. I know this is not an easy decision but please support the rent increase. Please support more council housing. Please support providing stability and security for some of Bristol's most deprived families. Okay, so you have 30 seconds left. It might be unpopular with some, but it is the right thing to do. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd now like to call upon Councillor Bowden-Jones to second the amendment, thank you. Um, I'd like to second the amendment, reserving my remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would now like to call upon Councillor Godwin to speak on behalf of the Labour Group. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Bristol needs more homes. It needs better homes and it needs cleaner, greener, more efficient homes. Today's proposal to freeze council tenants' rents for one year doesn't change those facts. Building and improving housing remain the key focus for this administration with direct leadership from the mayor. However, we are in the midst of a pandemic, a pandemic that has crippled the economy, led to devastating loss of life and has disproportionately targeted the elderly, the low paid and those from ethnic minorities, exactly the groups that are most likely to live in council housing in Bristol. Over the past few weeks, I've heard some interesting, some flabbergasting and some frankly discriminatory arguments against this proposed rent freeze. It's only a few quid a month. I've spoken to one council house tenant and they're happy with the rise. They're lucky to have a council house. And most shockingly, words to the effect of, it doesn't matter, they're all on benefits anyway, the government will pay. In fact, even the wording of this amendment gives a lazy, unqualified estimate about the number of benefits claimants in our council housing. 50 to 65% is the guess from the Green Party. So perhaps we need to remind ourselves of the facts. Less than a third of the adults living in council housing receive housing benefit or universal credit. Our council tenants are likely to be low paid workers or key workers, exactly those people we clapped for last summer and a significant number are retired. Many would have lost work in this last year. They aren't wealthy. Rent arrears for council properties have increased by 1.4 million pounds in this past year. People are struggling. Life is challenging for many at the moment. I hear stories from my ward of Southmead every day. A rent rise isn't what they need. This weekend, we learned from the National Institute of Social and Economic Research that the number of destitute families in the UK has doubled in the past year. There are now over 420,000 households living in destitution. These are the same households that we fight for when we talk about ending fuel poverty, period poverty and food poverty. The same families receiving food parcels and accessing our hardship funds. Why wouldn't we freeze their rents if we can? Many of our residents haven't received the repairs and maintenance that they pay for this year. 
large scale projects such as new lifts, insulation and estate improvements haven't been able to happen, primarily because Thanks, of COVID, you have 30 seconds left. No, not because of a budget constraint. As a landlord, we surely have an obligation to acknowledge this and not to increase rents after such a difficult year. We must ask ourselves, what would we expect of a private landlord or a student landlord in the same situation? We have the opportunity to freeze rents this year. It is something that the council can do to show solidarity with the city and to try and do it. It is the right thing to do. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would now like to call upon Councillor Eddie to speak on behalf of the Conservative group. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. My Lord Mayor, all budget amendments only affect a fraction of the overall budget, but they are an important key to the flavour of individual group priorities. This Green Amendment is very similar to Labour's of last year, Perhaps the Greens should drop their pretense of independence and merge with Bristol Labour. Councillor Denya has made her view clear. She said since the majority of tenants receive benefits, the government will pay the increase. May I remind Councillor Denya of a simple law of economics? The government or this council has no money of its own. It purely uses taxpayers' money. Frankly, if this goes through, we all have to pay. This is further pressure on all of us, especially after COVID, as Councillor Godwin has made clear. It's estimated that the government has... Uh, spent well over £280 billion combating COVID. Brist the Bristol area itself has received over £700 million. Pounds. So the cost on the uh, public purse is immense. If Jeremy Corbyn had got in, frankly, the public finances would have been chopped to pieces and there was no way they could ever have attempted this. Finally, my Lord Mayor, as I said to a Labour friend recently, interestingly, there are no more now working class Tory councillors than members in the Labour group of that perspective. Um, frankly, unlike the Greens, We'll keep it our faith with working, hardworking families and vote against this amendment. Thank you. I'd now like to call upon Councillor Negus to speak on behalf of the Liberal Democrat group. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. To maximise affordable housing, a strategy is there to be delivered. There will be always be problems along the road and to keep moving to the objective, you need to overcome or mitigate those problems, not use them to veer off the road or to stop. Time and resource were wasted when the mayor redefined the clean air objectives for his own reasons. He lost his way then and is now doing the same with affordable housing. We councillors need to demonstrate in this vote that it's too important to be deflected. We've heard rightly about increased burden for some of our most vulnerable citizens. There are ways this can be eased for some and there are other things we can do uh, to, uh, to make uh, that position better. But we, we must not divert from our intention to make sure we rehouse as many people as or house as many people as we possibly can. There are there are I'm worried about more about the effects of a council tax rise on our council housing tenants, but also on so many private renters and others in difficulty. And I'm proud that my party commissioned the first new council housing after 30 years of labor control here, and that we took the principled stand to maintain our council tax support scheme. 
This will help us to do the right thing now, which is to stick to the strategy to maximize affordable house building. The, uh, the mayor still has a lot of catching up to do with the Lib Dems in this respect, I, sh I should tell you, and work, all, and work all the levers to mitigate any resulting uh, problems and, and hardship. Never forget the simple fact that there are too many families without a home in Bristol. That's what needs to be fixed. This amendment is, if you sensitively, a better way of doing that, and the Lib Dems will support it. Thank you. Thank you very much. That brings to an end the debate. Councillor Bowden-Jones, a seconder of the amendment, would you like to respond to the amendment before us, before we vote? You have three minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. When I was a child, I watched war films with my dad. I worried that if I faced the choice between following the pack whose collective actions were perilous to others, would my ethics be sufficient to enable me to stand alone? Today, I test my own hypothesis. So let's get one thing straight. This council rent freeze is nothing to do with coronavirus or helping people on low incomes. Let's be honest. I've been at the Labour group meetings where speaker after speaker supporting the freeze starts by saying, ooh, we shouldn't raise rents in the run up to an election. Some don't understand what a rent freeze means. Rent is income, creating borrowing power, without which we restrict our ability to repair, regenerate, retrofit and build houses. Every four years, they would ditch housing investment for votes. Do you know any other business model where your 30-year plan is punctuated every four years by self-indulgence? We are happy to put up council tax for the same people by 5%. Yes, apparently a 1.5 rent rise is too much for people to take, even though the benefit system for both is the same. The report which went to Cabinet showed an enormous reduction in social rented housing because 30% of the future programme will now be shared ownership. A difficult decision for some members of the Cabinet. Difficult for Helen Godwin, as cutting the social rented housing programme means she is voting today to leave families in temporary accommodation for longer. We know they can't afford shared ownership. Difficult for Nicola Beach, our staunch advocate for strong planning policy. She is voting for a form of shared ownership which doesn't meet the planning department's definition of affordable. Difficult for Asal Shan, because he is voting to take over 100 million from the spending power of the housing department when there is a bill of 500 million to retrofit homes to meet our carbon reduction targets. Difficult for cabinet members who have lived in council houses to remove an opportunity for those who now have that same need for a home they once had. Difficult for some of my colleagues who have been told they will not be able to stand in the May elections if they vote to save our council housing. Difficult to look at the finances and say there is an underspend. Covid means that thousands of repairs have not been completed or even reported. Those have the repairs now disappeared with the vaccinations? Did we have a vaccination that made the damp, a broken window or leaking roofs disappear? The money is only there because the... Councillor, you have 30 seconds done. left. Thank we you. We ask ourselves, when will we be told that the challenges we have in sustaining council housing can only be solved by public-private partnerships? Public-private partnerships. Read privatisation. We should not put votes before ensuring our tenants have warm, safe and well-maintained homes. We should not put a headline on a leaflet or a tweet before building social rented. Yes, social rented, not shared ownership. Homes for the thousands of families... Let's draw to a close now, please. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, can I remind members that um, it's, if you're holding um, a board up or some paperwork, if you hold it in front of the microphone, we cannot hear you as well. So if you can hold it down a little bit, then it doesn't obstruct the microphone. Thank you. Um, I would now like to call upon the Cabinet member, Councillor Craig Cheney, um, to respond prior moving to the vote. Councillor, you have three minutes. Thank you. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. So excluding the last speech, which contained various untruths and some unfair slurs on certain members of our group, I just want to thank everyone for what, what was actually a, a fairly, um, you know, a reasonable debate in the circumstances. For us, this has been a very difficult judgment to make, and it's been based absolutely and entirely on what we think is morally the right thing to do. And that, you can fall down on either side of that decision. It's not an easy one for anyone to make. Um, but 
well, anyway, moving on from that. So, so we, we made this decision. We continue to, to believe it's the right thing to do. Taking four pounds out of someone's um, income is four pounds is a meal. We're taking a meal away from people. So I find that very difficult in a pandemic to, to countenance. Thank you very much indeed. I'd now like to move to the vote on the Green HRA amendment. The amendment summary it is now going to be displayed on the screen. We now move to the vote. This will be in the form of a roll call. You are voting on the Green HRA amendment and the names will be read out in alphabetical order. Thank you. Councillor Don Alexander. Against. Councillor Leslie Alexander. Councillor Leslie Alexander. Sorry, against. Councillor Beach. Against. Councillor Bowden Jones. For. Councillor Bradshaw. Against. Councillor Brain. Against. Councillor Bolton. For. Councillor Brook. Against. Councillor Breckles. Against. Councillor Carey. For. Councillor Cheney. Against. Councillor Barry Clark. Against. Councillor Stephen Clark. For. Councillor Clough. For. Councillor Comley. For. Councillor Craig. Against. Councillor Chris Davies. For. Councillor Denya. For. Councillor Dud. Against. Councillor Eddie. Against. Councillor English. For. Councillor Fodor. For. Councillor Godwin. Against. Councillor Goggin. Against. Councillor Gollop. Against. Councillor Galandris. Against. Councillor Hans. For. Councillor Hickman. Um, ag against. <clears throat> Councillor Hiscott. Against. Councillor Holland. Uh, against. Uh, Councillor Hopkins. For. Councillor Jackson. Against. Councillor Jammer. Against. Councillor Johnson. Against. Councillor Jones. Against. Councillor Keane. Against. Councillor Kent. For. Councillor Khan. For. Councillor Kirk. Against. Councillor Lake. For. Councillor Lovell. Against. Councillor Massey. Against. Councillor Mead. Abstain. Councillor oh, Malias. Against. Councillor Morris. Against. Councillor Negus. For. Councillor O'Rourke. For. Councillor Pierce. Against. Councillor Phipps. Against. Councillor Pickersgill. Against. Councillor Quarterly. Against. Councillor Radford. Against. Councillor Rippington. Abstain. Councillor Sargent. For. Councillor Shah. Against. Councillor Smith. Against. Councillor Thomas. For. Councillor Threlfall. Against. Councillor Tinknell. Against. Councillor Wellington. Against. Councillor Weston. Again, Mummy. <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> Against. <laughs> Councillor Whittle. <laughs> Abstain. Sorry, that's my baby. Councillor Windows. Against. Councillor Wright. Abstain. Mayor Reese. Against. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you. So the results are as follows. Um, 
we have 19 for, 42 against, four abstentions and two apologies. So the amendment falls. Thank you. I would now like to move to amendment number four. This is a green amendment. This amendment involves the revenue budget and there will be one vote at the end of the debate. I would first of all like to call upon Councillor Thomas to move the amendment on behalf of the Green Group Revenue Amendment. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. To improve our transport system in Bristol, we need to improve our public transport and our funding for cycling and walking, and these will help us reduce our dependency on cars. The more we're able to generate the funding locally to do this, the less dependent we'll be on going to central government for handouts to fund piecemeal improvements in our transport system. A workplace parking levy is one realistic way to do this. A workplace parking levy would introduce a charge on employers in Bristol who provide private workplace parking, frequently provided as a perk to some of their highest paid employees. The proposed funding would allocate money to develop an outline business case for the project, adding to funding previously secured by a Green Amendment last year to develop a feasibility study for the proposal. Nottingham has successfully used re revenue generated by their workplace parking scheme to double the size of their tram network and fund other transport work, generating over £44 million between 2012 and 2017. We welcome the fact that Labour and the Lib Dems have supported the principle of workplace parking levy, and now is the time for action. We recognise that no work took place on the successful budget amendment that Greens proposed last year on the workplace parking levy, but do appreciate the exceptional circumstances. If the Green Amendment passes, a workplace parking levy could be ready to launch in 2023 20, to 24. There would be exemptions to the levy, for example, for workers with disabilities who have no alternative but to drive. The money raised by the amendment could be used in the shorter term to fund improved dedicated cycling routes, increased bus service, reduced ticket prices, and in the longer term, fund mass, fund mass transit capability, including trams and trains. I ask you to support the budget amendment. Thank you. I would now like to call upon Councillor O'Rourke to second the amendment. Thank you. Uh, I second the amendment, reserving my remarks. Thank you. I would now like to call upon Councillor Pearce to speak on behalf of the Labour Group. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, when we, as elected members, propose an amendment to the budget, first we must identify a source of funding to take that money from. And it needs to be sustainable and it needs to be non-damaging. And I'm afraid it's at this early stage where this amendment fails. To paraphrase, we're being asked to reduce spending on developing an asset management plan or strategy. Now with any assets, the 80-20 rule applies. Your largest commitments eat up most of your attention. 80% of effort gets expended on 20% most valuable or costly projects. We've been prevailed upon regularly to develop an asset management strategy, and we must progress this work now, lest our assets become liabilities through a lack of oversight. The amendment suggests that workplace parking will bring in more money than an asset strategy, but we cannot know how much we would hemorrhage through unknowable repair costs, through lack of attention. Um, we see a lot of very, um, very agreeable suggestions for amendments, but they have to be paid for. And the cost of doing this one is too much. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you very much. I'd now like to call upon Councillor Galandris to speak on behalf of the Conservative group. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. 
the Conservative group will be opposing this amendment. Having previously seen a green amendment to raise rents, we now have an amendment to increase taxes on Bristol's businesses. This green amendment, like the previous one, is ill-timed, cruel, and frankly shocking. In the midst of an unprecedented pandemic, businesses desperately need our help. Increasing their costs by this stealth tax could for some businesses be the final nail in the coffin. The Green Party is clearly oblivious to the devastation the pandemic is causing to the finances of so many local businesses. The Greens either don't understand what's happening economically or they don't care. The good news is that the Conservative government does understand the needs of people in business and does care. Since the start of the pandemic, Bristol has received around £700 million of support from central government. This includes business grants, business loans, business rate relief and furlough monies. Conservatives care about local businesses. The Green Party clearly does not. The Green Party's amendment, if agreed today, would take money from local businesses just at the time when they're fighting for their very survival and every penny counts. Frankly, that's disgraceful and shows crass insensitivity and fiscal illiteracy. In summary, my Lord Mayor, I hope all colleagues will reject this ill-timed tax increase on our local businesses. Indeed, I'm confident that decent-minded colleagues will agree with me that kicking businesses and kicking people when they're down is not politically woke or cool. It's morally repugnant. I sincerely hope that even some Green members will reflect and agree that now is not the time to be inflicting additional costs on Bristol's businesses. Please vote against this amendment. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you very much indeed. I would now like to call upon Councillor Hopkins to speak on behalf of the Liberal Democrat group. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Councillor Hopkins, you have three minutes. Thank you. Uh, Liberal Democrat group will be supporting this amendment. Uh, it doesn't surprise me the tone that we actually got from Councillor Pierce, but quite frankly, a uh, proposal to actually put in the early stages of a scheme that would take several years to actually deliver uh, the outrage from Councillor Galandris is a little disappointing. We actually had this as council, official council policy workplace parking 10 years ago. And unfortunately, we were unable to progress it because central government would not uh, give us the, the backing that we actually required. Business, in actual fact, was not against the proposal what they said was we want some more investment in public transport as well at the same time uh, and that was actually delivered from the money that had already been got in uh, from a central government by means of the great bristol bus network and then the, uh, the 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 metro bus so basically that bit of it that side of the bargain was actually kept and what we actually have in the, in the city at the moment is that people on comparatively low income find it impossible to, to, to bring a car into town. Now, some might say that's wonderful, but I do find it very concerning that the bosses can go into tax perked uh, uh, parking spaces supplied by their company and, and the poor work, their, their secretaries and working staff actually have to take uh, you know, other means of getting into town. We need to actually invest more in public transport and in Nottingham, this has actually provided a very effective way of actually doing that. And it does not actually unfairly penalise individuals. It will in actual fact be a sensible way to raise revenue and at the same time, reduce demand for car usage within the city. Thank you. Thank you. That brings to an end the debate. Councillor O'Rourke, as a seconder of the amendment, would you like to respond to the amendment before us before we go to the vote? You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd like to take an opportunity to come back on what uh, some of the other councillors have said. Um, if you don't mind, I think I'll start with um, responding to what John Galandris said about uh, the fact that we don't understand or that we don't care. Um, on the first point of that, uh, the whole thing is we do understand. We understand that the world is changing and that progress is happening. And we understand, for example, 
that this council depends, I believe, on nine million pounds um, annually on income from um, the, the situation as we have it at the moment with um, fines and parking levies that we have at present. And at the same time, you know, the mayor last year introduced some innovations, uh, closing off parts of the old town, we're bringing in a CAS zone. All of these issues are going to reduce the amount of um, money that we can raise from these levies. So we've got to be, we've got to be up there in the, in the front. We've got to be in the vanguard. We've got to control change. It's going to be too late to sit back, watch all of that money deplete, and then not have anything to to um, to use to to support our services. And what J Jerome said about having more autonomy, I mean, the fact that Nottingham have been able to raise 44 million in a few years to pay for an amazing tram service and to promote their public bus services, that's something that we want to be able to do. And it's not that we don't care. Um, you know, again, Jerome in his speech said there would be exemptions. It's quite clear that this... Um, having private parking in city centres for offices is often for the uh, more senior members of staff. So, you know, this is something where we're given an opportunity to level up as well. Um, going to, to Steve's uh, argument about not being able to support and fund it from the assets strategy. I mean, I've been on scrutiny of this assets strategy for years and it is a fairly movable feast. And I think that it's perfectly legitimate. And even, you know, I don't even think with the, the, the sort of the tenor of his, of his voice that Steve even really believed the, um, the points of his own arguments. So I would ask everybody here today to really consider the fact that we've got to be progressive, we've got to change, we've got to plan for change, and that having this outlined business case will put us in a fine position to be able to put this levy in place when it, when it seems that it absolutely is going to be something that we need to do. So I think it's a very good amendment, I think it's very sensible and I urge you all to vote for it. Thank you. Thank you. I'd now like to call upon the cabinet member, Councillor Dudd. Would you like to respond before we move to the vote? You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, yeah, I would like to uh, respond actually. And um, yes, for, I mean, two reasons that uh, the Labour group will be opposing, opposing this. The first one's outlined by Councillor Pierce, it's the, the source of the money, where, it, where it's coming from. Um, we, we believe that's a false economy to move the money away from, from, that, from that source. But secondly, the, the, the work around this is already taking place. So um, uh, Councillor Thomas was right to point out that it has been delayed due to the uh, COVID situation, but we're currently talking to Nottingham City Council, which you uh, you reference about working with them on, on doing this work. They're, they're the council uh, with the expertise. So we are talking with them at the moment as we speak about commissioning that piece of work. So rest assured that that piece of work is is happening. So in, in a sense, this amendment isn't isn't necessary. And I, I think it is important, important that obviously you do reference Nottingham and the fact that Nottingham brought it in to actually fund a step change in their public transport infrastructure, so the so the tram system. So, in terms of that coming into this part of the country, into in, into Bristol, we would look at it to fund that step change, or use it to support that step change, and that's why it's outlined in the joint local transport plan documents around supporting um, a mass transit system. So we do see it as something that should be used to support that step change rather than pay for stuff that's sort of business business as usual. Um, so timing is important on this when that is when when it's introduced as well. Um, but I, I do find it quite interesting, uh, Councillor Thomas. I don't know if you're still supporting uh, congestion charge for people outside of Bristol, or is it have you dropped that now, or is it just people outside of, outside of the west of England boundary now that you want to charge for coming in? I'm not I'm not quite sure where the Greens are on this, but. Um, the Labour group will be opposing this. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would now like to move to a vote on the Green Revenue Amendment. The amendment will be displayed upon the screen. We will now move to the vote. This will be in the form of a roll call. You are voting on the Green Revenue Amendment. 
and the names will be read out in alphabetical order. Thank you. Councillor Don Alexander. Against. Councillor Leslie Alexander. Against. Councillor Beach. Against. Councillor Bowden Jones. Against. Councillor Bradshaw. Against. Councillor Brain. Against. Councillor Bolton. For. Councillor Brooke. Against. Councillor Breckles. Against. Councillor Carey. For. Councillor Cheney. Against. Councillor Barry Clark. Against. Councillor Stephen Clark. For. Councillor Clough. For. Councillor Comley. For. Councillor Craig. Against. Councillor Chris Davies. For. Councillor Denya. For. Councillor Dudd. Against. Councillor Eddie. Against. Councillor English. For. Councillor Fodor. For. Councillor Godwin. Against. Councillor Goggin. Against. Councillor Gollop. Against. Councillor Gulandris. Against. Councillor Hans. For. Councillor Hickman. Against. Councillor Hiscott. Against. Councillor Holland. Against. Councillor Hopkins. For. Councillor Jackson. Against. Councillor Jammer. Against. Councillor Johnson. Against. Councillor Jones. Against. Councillor Keane. Against. Councillor Kent. For. Councillor Khan. For. Councillor Kirk. Against. Councillor Lake. For. Councillor Lovell. Against. Councillor Massey. Against. Councillor Mead. Against. Councillor Melias. Against. Councillor Morris. Against. Councillor Negus. For. Councillor O'Rourke. For. Councillor Pierce. Against. Councillor Fitz. Against. Councillor Pickersgill. Against. Councillor Quarterly. Against. Councillor Radford. Against. Councillor Rippington. Against. Councillor Sargent. Abstain. Councillor Shah. Against. Councillor Smith. Against. Councillor Thomas. For. Councillor Threlfall. Against. Councillor Tinknell. Against. Councillor Wellington. Against. Councillor Weston. Against. Councillor Whittle. Councillor Whittle. Abstain. Again, again. Councillor Windows. Against. Councillor Wright. For. Mayor Reese. Against. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you. The votes are in. And we have 18 for, 45 against, two abstain and two apologies. So the amendment falls. Thank you. I would now like to move to amendment number five. This is a green group amendment. This amendment involves the capital budget and there will be one vote at the end of the debate. Councillor Vodal, um, I'd like to call you as mover of the motion on behalf of the green group. You have three minutes, Councillor, thank you. Thanks very much, Lord Mayor. More and more people live in the city and the pressures of development do affect all our communities. Developers provide SIL, community infrastructure levy, to help compensate for these pressures on the population. A small amount, usually 15%, is given to the area committees for choosing small local projects that get requested. But the rest is, had, is held centrally for strategic purposes by the mayor. Since he canceled the arena project in the center, 
up to 12 and a half million pounds has been unallocated in the growth and regeneration budget for that arena project, despite other ideas that might be penciled in, but are unconfirmed. The money is still available. My amendment is a helpful proposal to put this capital to use right away to help our communities who are all under pressure. It has to be spent strategically on physical projects dealing with development pressures. And what's more of a pressure on communities across the city where ever more housing and congestion impacts on all our neighbourhoods than the pressures we've seen these last 11 months on our worn out parks and open spaces and our run down streets with inadequate space for safe getting around. What's been revealed is the desperate need for new capital investment. In parks, this is needed to improve accessibility, reconfigure, reconfigure paths and circulation routes, add vital facilities and equipment, space for nature, and enable concessions or events that will need power and water. And this could generate vital revenue afterwards. I gather a decades long capital strategy is being drawn up for this, but we need it sooner. And in residential areas, we need investment to make our streets more livable, dealing with rat running, road safety, accessibility, dangerous parking, and to make streets more pedestrian and cycle friendly so that the city is healthy and age and child friendly. Groups are active across the city who are keen to work up these schemes with the council. And when we support them with real resources, in some areas, they'll be able to pull in more funds to multiply these new projects and uh, these new budgets. And in others, the capital projects can be prioritized to be funded centrally. So I'm suggesting half the capital helps with each of these strategic purposes, open spaces and local streets. You're I've suggested a four year counselor. spend. I'm just summing up. I've suggested a four year spend so the strategic seal can be replenished for the other spending goals that do exist. But while it remains unallocated, I can't think of better use than to help our communities under pressure of city development and the need for strategic recovery from the last year. Residents have been promised more livable neighbourhoods. Let's fund them. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd now like to call upon Councillor Hans to second the amendment. Thank you. Yeah, uh, seconding, reserving my remarks. Thank you. I would now like to call upon Councillor Beach to speak on behalf of the Labour Group. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, the Labour Group will not support this amendment to strategic seal today. And I just want to spend a bit of time to talk us through why that is. Strategic seal is used across the city to support capital investment. And in 2017, we made the decision to support areas of the city who are experiencing great change as the city meets its housing and employment challenges. This was a purposeful, unapologetic decision to invest in areas which includes transport network, parks and green spaces, which are coming under increasing pressure by growing resident populations, one which Councillor Comley and Fodor both seem to agree with in their speeches. Let's not forget where this money is created. It's created through city growth, which after all is not seen evenly across the city. I believe you can have the greatest impact when targeted place-based investment is made, supporting a new community to knit in with an existing community and creating great places where everybody can enjoy. And we're doing that already. 6.9 million supporting Bedminster, Southville and Windmill Hill, 24.5 million for Castle Park, St Jude's and Lawrence Hill. And just to turn to that centric accusation that came from West, Councillor Weston right at the beginning, I just want to talk through some of the other SIL investment in our communities, which are also growing. A new community hub for Lawrence Weston, Glencoin Square in Southmead, investment into community facilities in Lockleys and Perry Court School in Hengrove. As noted by officers in the budget report, this amendment to reallocate re strategic still threatens those planned investments in those communities from Lawrence West and to Hengrove. This would be in favour of two pots of money, which, which there's no detail or strategic case right now. Furthermore, between the parks, green spaces work led by Councillor Craig and the local cycling and walking infrastructure funds led by Councillor Dudd, I believe these are, both those needs are being catered for. Hopefully this recognises that this Labour administration is already investing heavily in both our valued green spaces and walking and cycling. Taking the tone of the amendment, we're already making this investment, but being purposeful to support those communities within or close to areas of growth and regen to create healthy green communities. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you very much. I'd now like to call upon Councillor Weston to speak on behalf of the Conservative group. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you very much, my Lord Mayor. Uh, I, I realise Councillor Fodor won't uh, appreciate this, but uh, I actually commend him on a very 
uh, well-delivered speech, uh, but we're not going to support it. Uh, and there are several reasons for this. I want to go into that. Uh, first of all, thank you to uh, Labour speakers uh, uh, today. They've, they've truly inspired me. Um, one of the criticisms that I've got with the way this works, and if you look at the wording to this and look at the wording to our amendment later on, we both seek to use the same pot. It's the 12 and a half unallocated. That's money where it, it, it's there. There's no business plan for any scheme. So we have absolutely no idea what's going on with these proposals. So it's not going to endanger Glencoin or anywhere else because actually that's taken care of. This is the unallocated spend. But apparently removing all of the money endangers those schemes, which I would understand. But taking a third of it endangers all of them as well. I think there's a bit of lazy wording there because actually, surely that's not the case, but it's used again later on. The danger at the moment, the, where the Greens are looking to spend this is incredibly worthwhile, with one caveat, but incredibly worthwhile. But doing so does rob all the other schemes, as was mentioned, of their potential to come forward. So the Froome Gateway, Castle Park and all that, that would fall if this went. But the problem here, and I think it's a problem for the administration, there's so little detail with these schemes that you're proposing. Would the Froome Gateway cost a million, two million, three million, four million? I don't know. At the moment, it just seems to be a footnote on a piece of paper. There's no detail with it. Um, the caveat I would also mention is when you talk about strategic transport, that actually needs, in some cases, to include car. Because actually, we have it in the north of the city where we have the Cripps Patchway New Neighbourhood. And we saw the proposals from the administration with the A4018 proposals, which were quite frankly ludicrous. But the suburbs do use cars to move around and actually allowing greater traffic flow in those areas, allowing them to move more easily is what those communities need to knit together. We don't all live in the city center and can't all access first rate public transport. So I'm afraid today we are against this because it seeks to damage schemes that are being worked up but also, in some regards, it actually ignores an important part of the transport mix as well. But uh, I commend the speech, Councillor Fodor. I thought it was very well done. Thank you very much. I would now like to call upon Councillor Negus to speak on behalf of the Liberal Democrat group. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, so money needs to be gamefully used in this city. So money uh, more switched from the kill-off arena to uh, parks and resolving transport issues certainly seems worthwhile, particularly with Labour's proposals to build over some of our treasured parks. Um, the electioneering from the executive member earlier about how, how the Liberal Dem Democrats restored our parks was simply wrong, I should say. I, I recommend she gets one of the Labour script writing team to seek out the facts and note the praise we received for the efforts that we took at that stage. Um, Labour and the Conservative members who uh, almost unanimously rejected taking the arena out of Bristol, which was the mayor's uh, contrived decision despite their concerns, will surely want to see better use of this wasted money. The Lib Dem amendment to cut the ludicrously padded mayor's office uh, with scriptwriters was lost, so these options are welcomed as they offer the only real chance of being smart about getting in front of some of the problems and creating real change in these situations. It's just, it's not like pacing down money, it's actually trying to get ahead of the problems, use initiative and try and make fundamental changes to the way this city operates. And that's what we tried to do and maybe this money could do it as well. We'd like it used not as a general new pot, but creatively to generate further beneficial change. This council should be more active in getting in front of issues and engaging not just with the usual suspects, but with its regular tax paying citizens. Moving this money into the useful zone is welcomed. I hope it would then be open to new uh, ideas from our people but sadly, this, cabinet, this council has a, a record of bearing down on that sort of initiative. I have concerns about the community impact levy in principle and certainly over recent announcement in the last few months. The whole process and the way it can be controlled by a council and by government. That said, this might be the last year this amendment could be brought. 
and we sh and we will support it. Thank you. Thank you very much. That brings to an end the debate. Councillor Hans, as seconder of the amendment, would you like to respond to the amendment before us before we vote? You have three minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, a few comments. It's uh, again, I'm sure Mark, Mark Weston shares my horror at the thought there are areas of agreement between us and the Conservatives, but there we go. It's been a funny old day in many ways. Um, clearly, however, we will not be, we don't share his opinions on the ben benefits of increased traffic flow for cars. Now, there's plenty of evidence to show that the more walkable and livable streets you have, the better the community cohesion is in whatever area of the city you live in. But I, I thank you for your partial praise, Mark. Thank you very much. Um, and again, we are grateful for the support of the Lib Dems. There's a couple of comments I would make, however, which have cropped up a few times. This, these funds appear to be unallocated. Um, the fact that there appear to be plans for it, they might not be, it's not really acceptable that there's this lack of clarity over such a large amount of money. I mean, it's hard to imagine, and well, I hope you, hope you forgive me for saying it, but it's hard to imagine a more diligent councillor than Martin. And if he can't work out what this money's for, then I'm damned if anybody else can, quite frankly. So there are issues there. And I don't doubt that the intentions that, that Councillor Beach outlined are, are, are good intentions, and I'm sure they will improve the city. The fact is it's, it's obscure to anybody outside of the inner workings of the, of the administration to find out what's going on here, which is why this has arisen, I think. Because thus far, for a lot of people, um, especially in my area of the city, the administration's promises around more livable streets, around walking and cycling infrastructure, so far it's been all motherhood and apple pie, I have to say. There's been very little concrete proposals. We have tried and tried, especially in my area, I'm sure other areas have experienced similar issues, since November, October, November last year, to try and get some kind of concrete plan or promise out of the administration, and we failed to do so. So, hence, in some desperation, um, this is why we're proposing an alternative source of funding in the absence of any clear direction elsewhere. So thanks for the support, guys. Um, I would urge you to vote for this. Um, we, all, we all approve of, we all, we, all, we all know that parks and our streets need sorting out. So let's try and pull behind this one. But thanks for your comments. Thank you. I'd now like to call upon the cabinet member, Councillor Beach. Would you like to respond prime to moving to the vote? You have three minutes, Councillor. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I mean, I don't know if there's much more to say, really, than what we've been through. I think, to be honest with you, it's an unusual prospect to be having this debate in a budget meeting. But I would just like to qualify that in my time on the Cabinet, I have had very, very little contact from any of the speakers today about how the use of strategic sill is actually spent. And so, Martin, you know, we know each other pretty well and I've got a huge amount of respect for you. And, I'd, you know, I'd be really welcome the continuation of that conversation in terms of how that money is best spent to transform these areas of growth and regen. The reason why I've not got a detailed business plan for every one of those locations is because it's been led by the community in those areas. You know, it's not for me today to say what investment is needed in St. Jude's to transform the Froome Gateway project and those areas of Eastern St. Jude's and St. Paul's. It's not for me to say that. And so I'm not going to sort of apologise, I guess, because that money is not completely ironed out. But what I can tell you is that area is changing. We all know that. We see that ourselves and we know that change is coming because we're planning for our growth. So I'll leave it there, Lord Mayor. My door is always open. Well, assuming I keep my job in for the next election. And so please, please do give me a call or speak to me about this issue. I'm always happy to talk it through. Thank you. I would now like to move to the vote on the Green Capital Amendment. The amendment summary will be displayed on the screen. We now move to the vote. This will, be, this will take the form of a roll call. You are voting on the Green Capital Amendment and the names will be read out in alphabetical order. Thank you. Councillor Alexander. Against. Councillor Leslie Alexander. Against. Councillor Beach. Against. Councillor Bowden Jones. Against. Councillor Bradshaw. Against. Councillor Brain. Against. Councillor Bolton. For. Councillor Brooke. Against. Councillor Breckles. Against. Councillor Carey. For. Councillor Cheney. Against. Councillor Barry Clark. Against. 
Councillor Stephen Clark. Four. Councillor Clough. Four. Councillor Comley. Four. Councillor Craig. Against. Councillor Chris Davies. Four. Councillor Denya. Four. Councillor Dudd. Against. Councillor Eddy. Against. Councillor English. Four. Councillor Fodor. Four. Councillor Godwin. Against. Councillor Goggin. Against. Councillor Gollop. Against. Councillor Gulandris. Against. Councillor Hans. Four. Councillor Hickman. Against. Councillor Hiscott. <coughs> Against. Councillor Holland. Against. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councillor Jackson. Against. Councillor Jammer. Against. Councillor Johnson. Against. Councillor Jones. Against. Councillor Keane. Against. Councillor Kent. Four. Councillor Khan. Four. Councillor Kirk. Against. Councillor Lake. Four. Councillor Lovell. Against. Councillor Massey. Against. Councillor Mead. Stupid. Oh, hello. Against. Sorry. <laughs> Councillor Melias. Against. Councillor Morris. Against. Councillor Negus. Four. Councillor O'Rourke. Four. Councillor Pierce. Against. Councillor Phipps. Against. Councillor Pickersgill. Against. Councillor Quarterly. Against. Councillor Radford. Against. Councillor Rippington. Against. Councillor Sargent. Abstain. Councillor Shah. Against. Councillor Smith. Apologies, against. Councillor Thomas. Four. Councillor Threlfall. Against. Councillor Tinknell. Against. Councillor Wellington. Against. Councillor Weston. Against. Councillor Whittle. Against. Yeah. Against. Councillor Windows. Against. Councillor Wright. Four. And Mayor Rees. Four. Sorry, against. Sorry, my apologies. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you. The results are in, so we have 18, 4, 46 against, one abstention and two apologies. So the amendment falls. Thank you. I would now like to move to amendment number six, which is the Conservative Group amendment. This amendment involves the revenue budget and there will be one vote at the end of the debate. I'd first of all like to call upon Councillor Steve Smith to move the Conservative Revenue Amendment. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lord Mayor. Uh, and it's, it's a pleasure to move the Conservative Revenue Amendment today. This is an amendment about priorities. And we are putting the priorities of real people outside City Hall over the priorities of those inside, over what the Mayor's described as our internal cogs, bells and whistles those cog bells and whistles are expensive and we think we can do better. We're funding the amendment firstly through the inevitable slippage that happens every year in the capital programme. If we build slower it means we borrow slower and therefore we pay less interest and that's part of what we're using to fund this. We're also funding it through reductions in uh, the cost of the mayor's office and PR because we think that taxpayers in Bristol have higher priorities for their money than the mayor's political enforcer and 90 grand's worth of social media monitoring. We would rather use that money in a number of ways 
that just helps to make people's real lives in the real world better. We start with reductions in some of the charges that the council levies on its own citizens. Uh, we've always opposed the idea of charging people to visit the council's parks. And at this time, when access to that green space is, is so important, more so than, than we could ever have imagined a year ago, it's all the more wrong. So we want to get rid of those parking charges that have been brought in at Blaze and Albury Court. Also, we want to reduce the cost of the charge for removing bulky items um, by a tenner a go. It's not much, but every little helps. We're asking people not to visit tips. We've seen the impact of, of fly tipping. It just makes life a little easier. We're also importantly allocating uh, money to send support and to youth services. Uh, now, Councillor Radford will say more about this when she speaks, but we know that SEND is an area where we are failing our children and failing our schools, um, and it must be a priority to direct some money in that area. Um, then on to defibrillators. Now, this is an idea that I, I'm happy to say I have stolen with pride from the Labour administration in Swansea. Uh, and I'm grateful to Councillor Andrea Lewis, who is the deputy leader there, for helping me out with, with um, information and with contacts. This isn't about buying and installing defibrillators, although it does put some of the infrastructure in place that allows other funding to come in for that. This is about creating uh, what Swansea have called a defibrillator friendly city. It's about the, the mapping and the signposting and the training so that when somebody needs a defibrillator- MC, in you have 30 seconds left, thank people you. People know where to find it and they know how to use it. it. It's simple, it's relatively inexpensive and it really does save lives. It's as simple as that. So that's the choice today. You can vote to spend more money on the mayor's office and PR and political enforcement or you can spend it making real people's lives better and saving lives in the real world. I know where our priorities lie. Thank you. I'd now like to call upon Councillor Radford to second the amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I second this amendment and reserve my remarks. Thank you. I'd now like to call upon Councillor Breckhaus to speak on behalf of the Labour group. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. We will not be supporting this amendment because relying on slippage in Boeing, in other words, delaying projects for 820 grand is risky. Merging the Mayor's office with the Executive Office ignores the difference between political and officer leadership. And as for cutting public consultation, well, the Tories were protesting at plans to create green, green space in Horfield for car parking only this month. Why? No adequate consultation, apparently. In my ward, I've worked with officers to develop a crossing scheme at a dangerous point known as Suicide Corner. Public consultation on the plans ended in January and the feedback allows us to improve the scheme even further. We need more and better consultation, not less. So where would the money go? Remove parking charges at Blaze Estate and Old Court. That's rather near some Tory held council seats, isn't it? Enough said. Next comes reducing bulky waste collection charges from 25 to 15 pounds. I understand this charge was initially introduced by a Tory cabinet member in a form of Bremer coalition. That said, we are looking at reducing the charge if a long-term fund source of funding can be found. Like the Lib Dems, the Tories offer more money for SEND. There's already half a million in the budget for SEND and we know the funding for that is complex. I do welcome the reference to neurodiversity but lifetime conditions need long-term support, not a short-term headline bung, some of which gets clawed back in a following year. Next is youth provision. Chronic underfunding since the Tories came to power has seen youth services cut by 73% nationally. Nearly one billion pounds has been lost from youth services between 2010 and 2020. In contrast, we are starting youth zones, first in South Bristol, investing 4.2 million each from us and our partners on side. In 2018, we invested 6.7 million in targeted youth services with Creative Youth Network, renewing that contract last September. We're delivering, and I've already started the conversation between Creative Youth and a potential venue for youth work in my own ward. We have received, revived the play sector, decimated by previous administrations and helped secure half a million pounds for the play across the city. An, exa you know, an example, I secured 100,000 in much funding the two fantastic players in my ward. Finally, most commonly community venues are equipped and with defibrillators and first aid training is already delivered widely. So we understand that this amendment 
is not on defibrillators isn't necessary at this point in time. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd now like to call upon Councillor O'Rourke to speak on behalf of the Green Group. You mm -hmm. have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I know that we're encouraged to bunch our amendments together, but frankly, the, the bunching here hasn't done the proposer any favours, as it just highlights what a pick and mix collection of really quite unstrategic ideas they are. Um, there are a couple of good suggestions in here. I mean, who wouldn't agree that we need to fund Send Better? And who wouldn't want better resources for young people? But I'm not persuaded that there's any real thought behind what the money for the youth would be spent on. I mean, what's the point of a fund for two years unless it's going to deliver something that would be embedded and real and forward going? Um, cutting the mayor's office and reducing spend on monitoring social media. Well, that seems designed to get popular approval, but has it been thought through? I don't really think so because I, alongside uh, Lib Dem and Conservative members, attend the weekly COVID-19 local engagement board meetings. And at those meetings every week, we see how hard working the offices are and we regularly compliment them. And I've heard other members say and acknowledge that these offices are practically on their knees dealing with the pandemic. And now today they want to cut that service by 25%? I don't think so. I wouldn't be proposed, uh, I wouldn't be opposed to an evaluation of the effectiveness of the mayor's office. Uh, but I think this is something for another time. And what we have today here is, is really just politics. One suggestion that uh, in this pick and mix really shines out is the recommendation that bulk waste collection should be reduced from £25 to 15 I'm always surprised that Tories think that they can offer European levels of service with American levels of taxation. It doesn't work. I mean, it would be nice to be able to offer free, free service, but it's not something that this council can afford at this time. And I just would not support or believe that the difference of £10 um, would really make a huge difference. And what I would actually suggest is that we use some of Don Alexander's new enforcement officers to make sure that they deal with fly tipping instead. That would be my recommendation. I think training um, and publicity on defibrillators is a good idea. I mean, I also read the story about uh, the Tesco employee who re refused a citizen access to one when a patient needed it and they died. So training information is needed, but I think this would be better to be a national campaign rather than, than uh, what's being proposed here today. So while there are a couple of sweet ideas- Thank you, in this you have 30 mix, seconds left, thank you. Thank you. So just wanted to say that while there are some sweet ideas in this pick and mix, there aren't nearly enough offers for me to be tempted to vote for it. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you. I would now like to call upon Councillor Khan to speak on behalf of the Liberal Democrat group. Councillor, you have three minutes. Thank you. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. Um, sorry. Um, sincere thanks. Thank to you, Marys, and all those who attended uh, to the International Mother Language Day and celebration uh, on the 21st. On the amendments, my Lord Mayor, um, basically congratulations to Councillor Alexander for being the man of the match. Um, I began by thinking of, thanking officers, resources, scrutiny commission, and other commissions for their hard work. Um, I wasn't surprised, however, little shocked to be welcomed by uh, mayor, cabinet member, um, and party leader, leaders' attacks on oppositions. I strongly believe that mayor contradicted PM Stanley Baldwin quote. I believe it is already established what is opposition's duty and responsibility. In case mayor is not a clear and Labour Party has forgotten, it is to keep check and balance on administration and at the same time speak for their rep uh, respective wards and communities needs. It is what all these amendments means. It is a well known fact, uh, any administration's best weapons to attack on oppositions, talk loud and avoid all the real answer. We have seen that from this administration too. Last week, full council and many other meetings before shows that administration prevented freedom of information request even preventing information from scrutiny commissions. Um, clear as day light, even from Councillor Mark Brain, who is one of the most experienced and well-respected across the board. This amendment, from um, this amendment from conservatives talks about some of the urgency 
while mayor priority is being grant project to attract big headlines and subsequently loss millions, such as we know, energy, Bristol Energy and, and Bristol uh, Beacon and, and all this. And don't we know uh, about the mismanagement deficit and potential risks that are waiting ahead? This administration is a relative, sorry, this amendment is a relatively small one, will not resolve all the local issues and needs. However, will provide significant, significant helps. Just to remind us all how terribly my ward East will suffering from bulky waste. It is a hotbed. It has been many months. I'm still waiting to hear from Councillor Pierce. You have 30 seconds left, Councillor. Oroch lives in, um, in, in Clifton, so she doesn't have to worry about that. Reduction in mayor office, PR, reduction in bulky waste collection, removing parking uh, charges, further investment on sand is vital and will mean a lot for some of our residents. In principle, Liberal Democrat will support this motion. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. Thank you very much. That brings to an end the debate. Councillor Radford, a seconder of the amendment, would you like to respond to the amendment before we move to the vote? You have three minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Yes, I would like to make comment. Um, firstly, thank you to Councillor Khan for the support for our amendment. Um, just to go through some of the comments from the other councillors, reducing spending on consultation may seem undemocratic, but we aren't saying cut the whole budget. We're just saying moving some of this funding this year to areas that are desperately in need of support. There's always slippage in MRP. Uh, so there is time that we can move this around. Looking at the um, bulky waste collection, many residents, particularly pensioners, are constantly saying to me they cannot afford the £25 for bulky waste collection. Reducing it to £15 would potentially help and it would end the, some of the fly chipping, hopefully, which would then have less cost for Bristol waste, which will hopefully then help for it to pay for itself. I think, though, one of the main things for me is looking at the SEND budget, which any money that we can help put towards the SEND budget is important. And for our youth, all of us have been affected by the pandemic in different ways. It doesn't matter how old we are, but the group that's most probably going to be the most affected for the foreseeable future and potentially for the whole of their lives is our youth. Those are the ones who've been trying to homeschool for nearly a year. They've lost out on valuable learnings to support their careers in later life. We focus on them getting back to school, but they've missed out on a year in learnings of social interaction, building their confidence and getting their independent, independence in the world. We're seeing reports of the huge increase in mental health issues within the teen age group, where for some social media is their only link to the outside world with no or little physical activity and parents working all hours to keep food on the table. These youth need support and the sooner we can help with this, the quicker an imp impact can be seen. Our schools are trying hard to provide opportunities for our youth at a time when they are already experiencing extreme pressure. And I appreciate that some areas are trying themselves to put uh, youth facilities in place, but the sooner we can also help them, that would be good. And looking at ideas, well, if you need ideas on how to use the funding, I refer to the November 2020 report from the youth mayors on the survey they carried out with young people about the effects of lockdown. You have 30 Therefore, seconds, Therefore, I hope counselor. you can support our amendment. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you very much indeed. I'd now like to call upon the council, the cabinet member, Councillor Craig Cheney. Would you like to respond prior to moving to the vote? You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. So um, I think I, I, Paul O'Rourke called out the problem with the amendment. There's so much bunched together here that it's quite difficult whether, whether there are things you agree with. You can't unpick them from things that you don't. So I have some sympathy with the MRP um, saving point. There, there is, we do regularly have slippage in the capital ground. That does leave us with the opportunity to spend that money potentially. It is always a guess of how much that might be, and with a new strategic partner in place, that may be maybe less than ever before. Um, I think the amendment itself, though, is you know is populist and leaflet fodder, really. And we're, we're you, again, we support good things, but we're against what we can spin, spin as bad things. And the comment was made that that we should focus on outside the city hall rather than inside. The things that you want to cut here are 
the mayor's office, so this team deals with 800 emails from residents a week. It deals with dozens and dozens of phone calls. It's dealt with the COVID response. It's worked on projects like school uniform drive, free school meals and so on. And the uh, COVID response, which I mentioned. So there's a huge amount of effort is done by our team precisely to deal with outside of city or not inside. Secondly, the, the funding will come from reduction in the PR and consultation team. So this, these are the teams that we used to speak to and hear from the public. So we want to cut that down as well. I said it earlier, but democracy comes at a price and is one that, that we're willing to pay. Um, so so we, we won't be back in this amendment and for those reasons. Thank you very much. I would now like to move to the vote on the Conservative Revenue Amendment. The amendment summary is displayed on the screen. We will now move to the vote. This will take the form of a roll call. You will be voting on the Conservative Revenue Amendment and the names will be read out in alphabetical order. Thank you. Councillor Don Alexander. Against. Councillor Leslie Alexander. For. Councillor Beach. Against. Councillor Bowden Jones. Against. Councillor Bradshaw. Against. Councillor Brain. Against. Councillor Bolton. Against. Councillor Brooke. Against. Councillor Breckles. Against. Councillor Carey. For. Councillor Cheney. Against. Councillor Barry Clark. Against. Councillor Stephen Clark. Against. Councillor Clough. <laughs> Councillor Comley. Against. Councillor Craig. Against. Councillor Chris Davies. For. Councillor Denya. Against. Councillor Dudd. Against. Councillor Eddie. For. Councillor English. Against. Councillor Fodal. Against. Councillor Godwin. Against. Councillor Goggin. Against. Councillor Gollop. For. Councillor Gulandris. For. Councillor Hans. Against. Councillor Hickman. Against. Councillor Hick. Councillor Hiscott. For. Councillor Holland. Against. Councillor Hopkins. For. Councillor Jackson. Against. Councillor Jammer. Against. Councillor Johnson. Against. Councillor Jones. For. Councillor Keane. Against. Councillor Kent. For. Councillor Khan. For. Councillor Kirk. Against. Councillor Lake. Against. Councillor Lovell. Against. Councillor Massey. Against. Councillor Mead. Against. Councillor Melias. For. Councillor Morris. For. Councillor Negus. Abstain. Councillor O'Rourke. Um, against. Councillor Pierce. Against. Councillor Phipps. Against. Councillor Pickersgill. Against. Councillor Quarterly. For. Councillor Radford. For. Councillor Rippington. Against. Councillor Sargent. Against. Councillor Shah. Against. Councillor Smith. For. Councillor Thomas. Against. Councillor Threlfall. Against. Councillor Tinknell. Against. Councillor Wellington. Against. Councillor Weston. For. Councillor Whittle. Against. Councillor Windows. For. Councillor Wright. For. Mayor Rees. Against. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you. The votes are as follows. 24, 44 against, one abstention and two apologies. So the amendment, budget amendment falls. 
We will now move to amendment number seven. This is a conservative group amendment. This amendment involves the capital budget and there will be one vote at the end of the debate. I would now like to call upon Councillor Hiscox to speak on behalf of the conservative group on the capital amendment. You have three minutes, Councillor, thank you. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. Whilst modest in monetary terms, the Conservative amendment aims to significantly enhance quality of life for citizens at a local level, focusing particularly on mental and physical health. The last 12 months has focused our attention on what really matters to us as a nation. And interestingly, they are the same things our forebears thought so important they enshrined them in law. Things such as access to free healthcare at the point of need, established in 1948. Breathing unpolluted air first mooted in the Clean Air Act of 1946. But amazingly, the provision of public green space back in 1848 in the Town Improvement Act, a Victorian value with no Victorian fairground jibe necessary. While central government shoulders the bulk of responsibility, public space for recreation and exercise falls to local government and should be considered a public service, not a commercial opportunity. Repositioning two million pounds into parks and green spaces would significantly contribute to the health and well-being of all ages. This is not controversial. It is vital to increase access to outdoor exercise facilities, local, and accessible that can't be subject to closure or unavailable because of cost. Whether that's a new trim trail to help young and old get back into shape and regain that muscle strength that's seriously diminished over lockdown, or just to provide safe space for walking so the elderly can regain their mobility. We also want to allocate funding for park repairs. It has been a tragedy during the pandemic that children who just need to let off steam in the open air too often find their local play area in need of repair. For example, in my ward, the swing frame in need of an actual swing. And let's not even go there on the subject of the council's plan to swap play space for parking space. These are the things that help families stay okay in tough times. Likewise, we want to put money into mitigating the consequences of necessary urban expansion. Building 8,000 new homes on the edge of the city, as in the Proofs Patchway development, you have 30 needs seconds to mitigate left, for extra transport issues, to ensure safe roads and clean air for existing neighbourhoods. So £2 million to upgrade road junctions such as the double roundabout on South Mead Road, which impacts on thousands of residents every day and would accommodate the extra transport burden and keep a local neighbourhood safe for walking, cycling and, yes, breathing. We also want Talk our people to now, drive Thank you. in this city. Um, so I'll draw to a close. This is an affordable amendment that will pay dividends for our suburbs and reduce health inequality. It is uncontroversial and and reasonably priced, I urge you to support. Thank you. I'd now like to call upon Councillor Quarterly to second the amendment. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, my Lord Mayor. Second amendment, reserve my remarks. Thank you. I would now like to call upon Councillor Dudd to speak on behalf of the Labour Group. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, speaking to um, oppose this amendment on behalf of the Labour group. And I think Councillor Beach made a lot of the arguments that I'm going to use um, in her, her speech in terms of the, the source of the money, in terms of the Green Amendment that was uh, that came, came uh, before us before. So I, I, I speak um, on this more so with my ward, ward member hat on. Um, we can see the... Uh, Officer advice, the service, service implication advice, that reallocation of this uh, this pot of money would put at risk the other the other projects that we've already identified, including Castle Park. Uh, now, as uh, now as the ward member for the centre of Bristol, I've obviously got a very clear responsibility to my residents, but I probably feel it more than most that 
the centre of Bristol is for, for the whole of Bristol, so I've got that extra responsibility to the rest of the city. Um, and this, this uh, pot of strategic seal is meant to be used for uh, mitigating areas where there's lots of change and high levels of development coming down the line. Now, the city centre is one of the fastest growing parts of the city in terms of residential population, but also there's a large amount of office development. There's plans coming forward around Broadmead, around the galleries, around St. Mary Laporte, all around Castle Park. Now that bit of green space has got to have, is, is going to have to work so much harder, not only for the residents that live in the area, but also the workers that come in and work in the area. And at the moment, the park is heavily used by residents and workers and visitors. So I feel that the uh, what, what Castle Park deserves is a proper master master plan, proper investment, so we can so we can uh, turn it into a central park for the city that we can all be proud be proud of. So my main opposition to, to this amendment is the fact that taking the money away from this puts all that at risk. Now it's quite ironic really, because um, I mean in the in the Green Amendment they obviously wanted to take this money away as well. And you've got the uh, bizarre situation of the Green Party in Central Ward actually promoting the fact that they want to take money away from Castle Park and put it into an un unallocated pot of money on the Friends of Castle Park Facebook group. So uh, that's that's quite bizarre, left, really. councillor. Um, but with the Conservative Amendment, not only do they want to take money away from Castle Park and other schools, they want to give it to uh, a development outside of Bristol to mitigate a development outside of Bristol in South Gloss. So it's uh, it's pretty bizarre, really. But um, please, please oppose this amendment. Thank you. I would now like to call upon Councillor Steve Clark to speak on behalf of the Green Group. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I think we're all getting a bit tired. I can see a few eyelids drooping on the Zoom, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. In any case, I'm not sure it really deserves that much time. Um, we heard a comment that the last amendment um, was like pick and mix. Without wishing to be too rude, Lord Mayor, the combination of ideas here is like a random series of plans pulled out of a top hat after a heavy night of drinking cheap brandy at the local Conservative Club. I absolutely agree with the officers who've written their comments against a number of these stating, quote, there is not enough detail to assess the impacts. As one of the many examples of this, we're told that two million pound will be spent to provide additional mitigation measures in respect of Cribs Patchway new neighborhood development. Well, what additional mitigation? New helicopter pad, perhaps? The Boris Johnson Memorial Lounge? Who knows, we're given no clue. Also, £1 million to create a new prefabricated housing scheme. Well, I know that the prefabs in Bristol that do survive from the post-war period are much loved by those who live in them, but I'm not really sure that's the standard of housing we should be looking at for our key workers. We will be voting against this amendment. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd now like to call upon Councillor Kerry to speak on behalf of the Liberal Democrat group. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, uh, my Lord Mayor. Um, I don't think I'm going to take three minutes because, as um, I said, you know, people are beginning to get a bit weary, perhaps. A um, bit of an element of the curate's egg about this one. Um, good in parts. And if it's not a curate's egg, well, sort of more of a foggy day. Um, Undoubtedly, yes, we, we all support better uh, sport, park and leisure facilities. But I don't know that we are actually working um, in putting these facilities in the right place. Um, so although the Liberal Democrat group generally supports this amendment, um, it perhaps lacks specifics to sort of get your teeth into. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. Thank you. That brings to an end the debate. Councillor Quarterly, as the seconder of the amendment, would you like to respond to the amendment before we move to a vote? You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Yes, if I can do um, Thank you, my Lord Mayor. Um, this amendment would make a big practical difference to people's lives and everyday experience. 
post-lockdown green spaces will have will play an important psychological role in aid and recovery and individual well-being. Take for example, King Ted Park in my ward, it was an excellent local park group, would welcome any support from these park projects this amendment could fund. Hyrus United Football Club is another good example of a local sporting club which could also benefit. The amendment is not being greedy and it will not harm or hinder any other objectives. All around the permitted use of seal themselves place limits on what the developer money can be spent on, but feel there needs to be a rebalancing in priorities to invest in the suburbs, like for example in Bishopsworth Ward. Another good example is the campus pool in Lord Skateboard Park, local asset where this sort of local project would benefit from this amendment. The new housing scheme, modern prefabs, for example, numerous designs are always coming onto the market at all times. But with the time delays in traditional building, growing demand for housing, social and affordable rented, there feels to be the need now to trial these new former modular homes. Post war, the old prefabs were intended as a temporary fix for the housing crisis, but they lasted well over 50 years and were greatly loved by those who owned them. In 2004, British Council embarked on a 10 year demolition programme. History doesn't exactly repeat itself, but we are now in the middle of another housing crisis with around about 12,000 households on the council waiting list. Good to commend itself to members and with command support. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. Thank you very much. I would now like to call upon the Cabinet member, Councillor Beach. Would you like to respond to the motion, um, sorry, the, the amendment prior to the vote? You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thanks, Lord Mayor. And I'll try and keep it brief. Um, just wanted to thank the speakers who've sort of already come before on, on this, really, and support Kai and Stephen in their sentiment. Um, I won't go into the sill again. We've already covered that off in the Green Amendment, um, but I do agree this sort of pick and mix approach and some of this stuff is picked up in other ways so cpnn is picked up in the section 106 and there's a lot of conversations about the double mini at south in south mead road that we're talking about in and that was referenced in that speech before um i just wanted to quickly draw on this on some of the detail around the high streets that was in there i think um just to cast our mind back to the, the great time before COVID hit us when uh, last year GNR Scrutiny held a high street inquiry day. And it was a really good opportunity to sort of dive into some of the issues and opportunities that our high streets face then. Now COVID has sort of accelerated all those things at sort of nuclear speed. And, and there's no doubt for anyone about the importance of our independent businesses and hospitality industries, and they will continue to be the hardest hit for some time. But help is there for our high streets and more is coming. We're already using our Love Our High Street Fund to bring sort of new and more diverse businesses to East Street, which is one of our most challenged high streets in the city. And we're also prioritising other high streets and local centres that have been hit hard with a COVID recovery fund and using the remainder of the Love Our High Streets. Um, I'm already be progressing those conversations with GNR Scrutiny in future, but more people can always come and talk to me about that. The help is needed in that area and help is coming, but it doesn't need to come from Strategic Sill. Thanks very much. Thank you. I would now like to move to the vote on the Conservative Capital Amendment. The amendment su summary is displayed upon the screen. We will now move to the vote. This will be in the form of a roll call. You will, are voting on the Conservative Capital Amendment and the names will be read out in alphabetical order. Thank you. Councillor Don Alexander. Against. Councillor Leslie Alexander. For. Councillor Beach. Against, sorry. Councillor Bowden Jones. Against. Councillor Bradshaw. Against. Councillor Brain. Against. Councillor Bolton. Against. Councillor Brooke. Against. Councillor Breckles. Against. Councillor Carey. Abstain, please. Councillor Cheney. Against. Councillor Barry Clark. Against. Councillor Stephen Clark. Against. Councillor Clough. For. Councillor Comley. Against. Councillor Craig. Against. Councillor Chris Davies. Mm. <coughs> Councillor Chris uh, Davies. Abstain. Councillor Denya. Against. Councillor Dudd. Against. 
Councillor Eddy. Or. Councillor English. Against. Councillor Fodor. Against. Councillor Godwin. Against. Councillor Goggin. Against. Councillor Gollop. Or. Councillor Gulandris. Or. Councillor Hans. Sorry about that. Against. Councillor Hickman. Against. Councillor Hiscott. For. Councillor Holland. Against. Councillor Hopkins. Councillor Hopkins. Councillor Jackson. Against. Councillor Jammer. Against. Councillor Johnson. Against. Councillor Jones. For. Councillor Keane. Against. Councillor Kent. For. Councillor Khan. Uh, for. Councillor Kirk. Against. Councillor Lake. Against. Councillor Lovell. Against. Councillor Massey. Against. Councillor Mead. Against. Councillor Melias. For. Councillor Morris. For. Councillor Negus. Abstain. Councillor O'Rourke. Against. Councillor Pierce. Against. Councillor Phipps. Against. Councillor Pickersgill. Against. Councillor Quarterly. For. Councillor Radford. For. Councillor Rippington. Against. Councillor Sargent. Against. Councillor Shah. Against. Councillor Smith. For. Councillor Thomas. Against. Councillor Threlfall. Against. Councillor Tinknell. Against. Councillor Wellington. Against. Councillor Weston. For. Councillor Whittle. Against. Councillor Windows. For. Councillor Wright. Abstain. Mayor Reese. Against. Councillor Hopkins. Abstain. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you. The results are in. We have 16 voting for, 44 against, five abstentions and two apologies. Therefore, the uh, amendment is lost. I would now like to move to section seven of the procedure. At this point, I would now ask, like to ask the Chief Financial Officer to confirm the position in terms of the budget amendment that has been carried. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I can confirm that of the seven amendments voted on today, one has been carried by Council. This is the Labour Group amendment to the General Fund revenue budget and will be for the Mayor's wider consideration along with the budget. Thank you. Thank you very much. As per the procedure, I, as the Lord Mayor, now formally move that full council notes the Chief Financial Officer's statement as required under the Local Government Act 2003. This is set out in full at paragraph 15 of the main budget report, page 46 on the electronic agenda pack and confirms the robustness of the budget estimates. May I ask Councillor Johnson, Deputy Lord Mayor, to second the motion. I second the motion, uh, Lord Mayor, and I reserve my remarks, thank you. Thank you. May I now ask full council to formally note the Chief Financial Officer's statement. Can I take it that it is agreed? Agreed. Can I ask if any councillors vote against, if they can indicate, please, by raising their hand or their electronic blue hand. We have nobody voting against it. Therefore, 
the the motion is carried thank you very much indeed i would like to now suggest that we have a 10 minute refreshment break that means we'll be coming back at 5 45 thank you very much indeed
thank you very much and welcome back. I can now advise full council that the mayor has indicated that he is accepting of the budget with the amendments as carried earlier at the meeting of full council. We therefore move to section 11 of the procedure. We are now going to proceed to vote on the budget recommendations as per the report and as displayed on the screen. Firstly, firstly then, as Lord Mayor, may I ask the Council to note the recommendations A2I. We seem to have jumped ahead a little bit. If you can just bear with me 30 seconds and we will go back to our, the starting point. I think we've missed out a whole section. So accept my apologies, just two seconds. Thank you very much. Um, we will now move to section eight of the procedure. And thank you very much for Tim O'Gara for pointing it out to me. We now move to the wider debate on the revenue and capital budget as amended. Please may I remind members that th at this point where we should make any comments about any part of the budget recommendations. I would first of all like to call upon Councillor Tinknell to speak on behalf of the Labour Group. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. Um, now, this is likely to be one of my last speeches before I stand down from the Council in May, after eight years serving the Ward of Loch Lees. And I'm very proud to have played my small role in making this city and Loch Lees um, a much better place. Now, I'm almost disappointed that the Conservative Group, but not this year, proposing cuts to the arts and culture budget, um, and axing our European office, which is what we normally do every year. Um, so I can just demonstrate their absurdity. And it had become a somewhat ridiculous, if treasurable annual ritual. So I'm sorry not to be able to do that this year. And I think perhaps now Brexit is starting to bite, they may have realized just how important maintaining links with Brussels will become. Now this budget continues this administration's record of tackling the huge inequalities in this city. Inequalities which have been largely ignored by national government throughout 10 years of austerity and which have been exacerbated by Covid. It's clear to me that people want a different normal in future, one in which we value what's important, our communities, our relationships with each other and reliable public services run by staff who are properly rewarded. We can see the impact of the last five years across Bristol, and not least in my ward of Loch Lees, where much has been done. New housing, a new school, improvements to transport, investment in our green treasure at Stoke Park, and a much stronger network of children's centres. All this has been achieved with a balanced budget. We've made no cuts, despite the very challenging circumstances of COVID and the appalling financial legacy we inherited in 2016. To quote a well-known Labour Chancellor of the Exchequer, it has been prudence with a purpose. Now much has been done, but there's still much more that needs to be done. And I want to urge us to get on with it. And I urge all parties here in this chamber to support this budget. This isn't a time to pay political games, but to work together to continue to change Bristol for the better as a more inclusive, more equal and fairer city. And I guess council budget meetings really do tend to go on. And they sometimes do remind me of the Eagle song, Hotel California, but you can check out anytime you like but generally speaking, you can't leave. Let's move to the vote. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd now like to call upon Councillor Gollop to speak on behalf of the Conservative group. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, I'd like to start by putting on record my appreciation for the Council Finance team, who in an extraordinary year have made an exceptional contribution. Uh, the comments that follow are not a criticism of them, but of their political bosses. I want to start with the housing revenue account and the dedicated schools budget. They're not sustainable. No mitigation in place. Special needs still a priority, but no real action. 
move on. The company business plans. Now, they've been withdrawn at the last minute from two consecutive cabinet meetings. But of course, that doesn't matter because the figures the council will lend is already determined. So the other figures will be made to fit in. My Lord Mayor, that works so well for Bristol Energy. The Mayor is repeating it yet again. Now, let's move on to the capital programme. There sits our iconic, iconic capital project, the Bristol Beacon. Members, look at PL24 on page 77. With original cost of £56 million, pounds, there's £14 million pounds in, the bin, in, the, in the plan to finish off an unroofed shell. The paper that should have gone to Cabinet explaining what the position was, was pulled just after the last minute. Will it show the project on budget, my Lord Mayor? I think not. But we're being asked to vote on this budget with the majority of members of council not having a clue how bad this situation is. I asked the mayor or deputy, will you tell council how bad it is before they vote? I doubt it. To me, Lord Mayor, this seems like a blatant lie and a budget that should not have been signed off, let alone brought to council. These are my headline reasons for voting against this budget. To Labour councillors, I urge you, question how you can support a budget that misrepresents such critical information. To opposition councillors, I say, please join me in opposing this budget. Unless, of course, you're looking to secure a cabinet place in a post-election hung council cabinet. That really would be a case of vote green, get Labour. Lord Mayor, this cabinet has proved it cannot even manage the agendas for its own meeting. It certainly can't manage a budget. We will be voting against. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you very much. I'd now like to call upon Councillor Comley to speak on behalf of the Green Group. You have three minutes, Councillor. Thank you. I'm sorry to say that without the addition of the amendments we proposed, the budget that we are left with is not enough to win my support. As I said at the start of this meeting, it is lacking in ambition and vision and fails to put hard cash for action behind the fine words of our many and various policies and positioning statements. But this is the last budget meeting that we will have all together as a group, so I want to focus on the positives. I want to start by thanking the Lib Dems for their support, particularly of the HRA amendment. I remember, I think, that you opposed Paul Smith's amendment last year, so to support it now shows that you have really listened to the arguments with an open mind, lifted the bonnet and taken a good look at the numbers and changed your view, which is a rare and precious thing in politics. And I really want to give my thanks to those in the Labour group who resisted the pressure to vote with the whip. That takes real courage and I see and appreciate you. In fact, thank you all for what has been, by and large, a good humoured meeting with real debate and strong disagreement on the issues managed with respect. I'm sorry that we're not able to support this budget. I always think that we do better work when we work together. But after five years pushing for action, we cannot afford to keep kicking the can down the road on the climate emergency and hoping big companies will step in to save us. We cannot afford to miss out on millions of pounds for new council housing. And we cannot afford to keep neglecting our parks and local neighborhoods or throwing millions at big developments without proper scrutiny of where the money is going. So I'm sorry to say I can't support this budget. Thank you very much. I'd now like to call upon Councillor Kent to speak on behalf of Liberal Democrat Group. Councillor, you have three minutes, thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Hopefully I'll be less than three minutes. Um, well, it's been a long meeting, hasn't it, folks? And I know we all want to finish up. Uh, looking at the budget and looking at the debate, uh, I think we've seen a, a, an interesting debate this year. It might be the largest amount of rebels we've ever had to group lines, which is probably good and healthy for democracy. Uh, Marge, I, 
I, I sympathise with your Hanforth Parish Council moment there. Um, I myself have to go and reprimand several members of the group afterwards for voting against the group whip, which turns out to be my group leader. So that will be fun. Um, I did have this speech to say that the Liberal Democrats have supported every amendment today, but the last one we sort of split. So, um, but basically when we looked at the budget and when we looked at the amendments, our assessment was overall, what was the whole effect? Was it more good than bad? And that's how we looked at each amendment. And we felt each amendment had more good than bad in it. And that's why we voted for every party's amendments today. And I think uh, I would say to the ruling group, sometimes it can be difficult when you're in power. The arrogance can go to your head. You know, we've been there, we know what it's like. And I would say sometimes other people do have ideas. They're worth listening to does no harm to sometimes adopt those. Um, I think today some of the debate has been poor. Uh, I am quite concerned about a few misleading statements that were said to council. I was gonna go through and correct them, but actually I don't think that's helpful, so I won't. So just briefly then, we've not really talked about the companies uh, and the situation there, you know, the dire financial situation caused by Bristol Energy, but let's move on. I think we've, we have debated that enough in this chamber. Uh, we have not talked about uh, SEND a great deal. I know it's been in the amendments, but we haven't talked about education a great deal. Um, to say that we will support the vote on uh, the school's budget. I have noted, by the way, what the school's forum have said. It's short, and I think people should read that, in particularly highlighting the grave concern around secondary school places. I think we can add to that. I think we all know now to add to that special school places. So I do hope extra urgency will be put into those areas. Um, on the HRA and the, uh, we had we had a quite an internal debate as well. It sounds like not as fraught as that within the Labour group. You have group. 30 seconds left, Councillor, thank you. Um, but we decided in the end, it was the right thing to do, not necessarily the political thing to do, which was to support a what was a very, very small rent increase. And I would say it is tough for people, whether they can afford it or not, but a 5% council tax increase is a whopping lot higher than, than the rent increase. Overall, we will be opposing the budget today, but we will in the main be supporting the, the vote on the uh, dedicated schools grant. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. That brings to an end the debate. Mayor, would you like to respond to the budget before us, um, before voting on it? Um, you have three minutes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. So it's, it's worth just saying, yeah, I'm really proud of the uh, position on the, the uh, council rents. When we look at uh, the arrears people are falling into, um, the response uh, that we've had from community organisations uh, particularly as we go out and ask uh, landlords in the private sector to show restraint on their rent increases. Uh, obviously, you know, the point is, me, what did you do with the rents you're in control of, Bristol City Council, as you ask us to uh, look after tenants in our, our sector? And it comes with a package of a council tax increase, which is very important, but also remember retention of a 100% council tax reduction scheme that many more people are beginning to draw on. So it's looking at them as a whole. Um, I must say, I mean, I, I take the point that some people have talked to uh, some some high points, some points of enlightenment, um, and I'm not going to embarrass any uh, body in particular, but there were some points in which I think thank you uh, for actually grappling with an issue. But on the whole, I, I, I will say that um, there's an incredible, uh, there's a gulf of difference between, I would say, the quality of uh, conversation we have here in action orientation or the lack of, and that that we have in the city office. It was just, it was just uh, five or six weeks ago that James Jury wrote to Asher and myself about digital exclusion. We go to the city office with the leaders of the universities, the police, the hospitals, voluntary sector, trade unions, and then we have our digital exclusion strategy going. Over 3,000 laptops in the process of being cleaned, financial contributions from city partners, a single city system to get machines and data to uh, excluded young people, but also um, digitally excluded older people. It's, it's identify a problem, take action. It was only about four weeks ago that Andy Forbes from City of Bristol College talked about the need for an educational recovery plan, taking into account mental health, educational catch up, and those young people that are transitioning from school to the workplace without the pastoral support that, that, that covers that period of life and therefore falling into limbo. That educational plan is now being developed with our city partners right now. It was only this morning that Helen, Helen and I, as I shared earlier, met with a whole network of organizations looking at the plight of people with no recourse to public funds, 
a punitive national government approach, not listening to the needs of a local authority as we try to support some of those vulnerable people. We are taking action on that right now to, to make sure that we're supporting those people, as are our city partners coming forward with buildings and, and legal support. If only we had in this chamber, when we got together as elected politicians, the same kind of commitment to identifying the challenges we face as a city. With you the have same 30 kind of seconds left. I'm aware I've got my stopwatch already. <laughs> with the same kind of commitment to putting in place real world action to tackle those problems, I think the city would be a lot better off. And if we're not careful, the city will outgrow uh, this authority. It's desperate. We really need to make sure that we're action oriented, not swipe oriented. In, in, in what we do. But on the whole, I'm proud of this budget. I'm proud of what this uh, uh, cabinet um, has achieved. And thank you for the office of support for getting us here. Thank you very much. I can now advise full council that the mayor has indicated that he is accepting the budget with the amendment as carried earlier at this meeting by full council. We therefore move to section 11 of the procedure we are now going to proceed to the vote on the budget as recommended, as per the report as displayed on the screen. Firstly then, as Lord Mayor, may I ask Council to note the recommendations A to I. Can I take that as agreed? Can I ask if anybody wishes to vote against the recommendations? If you can indicate either raising your blue hand or you're physically raising your hand now, please. My Lord Mayor, I thought we were just noting those recommendations. We, we are, but I was just, I would, I've been asked if anybody wants to vote against it, if they want to indicate. Can I just check that a minute? I, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, Councillor Weston. Just bear with me. Okay, I've just clarified the situation. It is implied consent, but I was just asking if anybody wished to vote against. So it is implied consent. Is everybody happy with that? Thank you. And nobody has indicated otherwise. Thank you. Secondly, I move that the Mayor's budget proposals in respect of council tax for 2021-2022 be approved. In relation to council tax, I move the recommendations J to Q. Please may I ask Councillor Johnson, Deputy Lord Mayor, to second this motion. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I second the motion and reserve my comments. We now move to the vote. This will be a roll call. You are voting on the motion on the table and the names will be read out in alphabetical order. Sam will share the screen with Excel spreadsheet and notes of the votes provided a total at the bottom of the screen. Thank you. Councillor Don Alexander. For. Councillor Leslie Alexander. Against. Councillor Beach. For. Councillor Bowden-Jones. For. Councillor Bradshaw. For. Councillor Brain. For. Councillor Bolton. Against. Councillor Brook. For. Councillor Breckles. For. Councillor Carey. Against. Councillor Cheney. For. Councillor Barry Clark. For. Councillor Stephen Clark. Against. Councillor Clough. Against. Councillor Comley. Against. Councillor Craig. For. Councillor Chris Davies. Against. Councillor Denya. Against. Councillor Dudd. For. Councillor Eddie. Against. Councillor English. Against. Councillor Fodor. Against. Councillor Godwin. For. 
Councillor Goggin. For. Councillor Gollop. Against. Councillor Gulandris. Against. Councillor Hans. Against. Councillor Hickman. For. Councillor Hiscott. Against. For. No. Yeah, against. Councillor Holland. For. Councillor Hopkins. Against. Councillor Jackson. For. Councillor Jammer. For. Councillor Johnson. For. Councillor Jones. Against. Councillor Keane. For. Councillor Kent. Against. Councillor Khan. Against. Councillor Kirk. For. Councillor Lake. Against. Councillor Lovell. For. Councillor Massey. For. Councillor Mead. For. Councillor Melias. Against. Councillor Morris. Against. Councillor Negus. Against. Councillor O'Rourke. Against. Councillor Pierce. For. Councillor Fitz. For. Councillor Pickersgill. For. Councillor Quarterly. Against. Councillor Radford. Against. Councillor Rippington. For. Councillor Sargent. For. Councillor Shah. For. Councillor Smith. Against. Councillor Councillor Thomas. Against. Councillor Threlfall. For. Councillor Tinknell. For. Councillor Wellington. For. Councillor Weston. Against. Councillor Whittle. For. Councillor Windows. Against. Councillor Wright. Against. Mayor Rees. For. Who's this at right? Uh, Lord Mayor, I need to change my vote. I, I meant to vote against. I apologise. OK, we can change that before we announce the vote. Thank you. Thank you. That, that's everyone, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. So the results are in and we have 33, 4, 33, so 32 against, zero abstentions, two apologies. The motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you. I would now like to move to... <clears throat> the next vote, which is in relation to recommendation R, as contained within the report and displayed on the screen. May I ask Councillor Carol Johnson, Deputy Lord Mayor, to second the motion. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I second the motion and I reserve my remarks. We can now move to the vote. This will be take the uh, form of a roll call. You are voting on the motion on the table and names will be read out in alphabetical order. Thank you. Councillor Don Alexander. Four. Councillor Leslie Alexander. Abstain. Councillor Beach. Four. Councillor Bowden Jones. Against. Councillor Bradshaw. Four. Councillor Brain. Four. Councillor Bolton. Four. Councillor Brooke. Four. Councillor Breckles. Sorry, four. Councillor Carey. Abstain. Councillor Cheney. Four. Councillor Barry Clark. Four. Councillor Stephen Clark. Gaines. 
Councillor Clough. Abstain. Councillor Comley. Abstain. Councillor Craig. Four. Councillor Chris Davies. Abstain. Councillor Denya. Four. Councillor Dudd. Four. Councillor Eddie. Abstain. Councillor English. Four. Councillor Fodor. Abstain. Councillor Godwin. Four. Councillor Goggin. Four. Councillor Gollop. Abstain. Councillor Galandris. Abstain. Councillor Hans. Four. Councillor Hickman. Four. Councillor Hiscott. Abstain. Councillor Holland. Four. Councillor Hopkins. <laughs> Abstain. Councillor John Jackson. Four. Councillor Jammer. Four. Councillor Johnson. Four. Councillor Jones. Abstain. Councillor Keane. Four. Councillor Kent. Four. Councillor Khan. Four. Councillor Kirk. Four. Councillor Lake. Four. Councillor Lovell. Four. Councillor Massey. Four. Councillor Mead. Four. Councillor Malias. Abstain. Councillor Morris. Abstain. Councillor Negus. Four. Councillor O'Rourke. Four. Councillor Pierce. Four. Councillor Phipps. Four. Councillor Pickersgill. Four. Councillor Quarterly. Abstain. Councillor Radford. Abstain. Councillor Rippington. Four. Councillor Sargent. Four. Councillor Shah. Four. Councillor Smith. Abstain. Councillor Thomas. Four. Councillor Threlfall. Four. Councillor Tinknell. Four. Councillor Wellington. Four. Councillor Weston. <coughs> Abstain. Councillor Whittle. Four. Councillor Windows. Abstain. Councillor Wright. Four. Mayor Rees. Four. Um, I'm sorry, Lord Mayor, I misspoke. Can I change my vote to a four with Stephen Clark? Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you. The results are 45 for, one against, 19 abstentions, two apologies. The motion is carried. Thank you very much. Next, in relation to the recommendations S to W, as contained within the report and displayed on the screen. May I ask Councillor Johnson, Deputy Lord Mayor, to second the motion, please. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I rise to second this motion whilst res whilst reserving my remarks. Thank you. We now move to the vote. This will be, this will take the roll, form, sorry, this will take the form of a roll call. You are voting on the motion on the table and names will be read out in alphabetical order. Thank you. Councillor Don Alexander. Four. Councillor Leslie Alexander. Four. Councillor Beach. Four. Councillor Bowden-Jones. Against. Councillor Bradshaw. Four. Councillor Brain. Four. Councillor Bolton. Against. Councillor Brook. Four. Councillor Breckles. Four. Councillor Carey. 
Against. Councillor Cheney. For. Councillor Barry Clark. For. Councillor Stephen Clark. Against. Councillor Clough. Against. Councillor Comley. Against. Councillor Craig. For. Councillor Chris Davies. Against. Councillor Denya. Against. Councillor Dudd. For. Councillor Eddy. Abstained. Councillor English. Against. Councillor Fodor. Against. Councillor Godwin. For. Councillor Goggin. For. Councillor Gollop. Abstain. Councillor Galandris. Abstain. Councillor Hans. Against. Councillor Hickman. For. Councillor Hiscott. Abstain. Councillor Holland. For. Councillor Hopkins. Against. Councillor Jackson. For. Councillor Jammer. For. Councillor Johnson. For. Councillor Jones. Abstain. Councillor Keane. For. Councillor Kent. Against. Councillor Khan. Against. Councillor Kirk. For. Councillor Lake. Against. Councillor Lovell. For. Councillor Massey. For. Councillor Mead. For. Councillor Malias. Abstain. Councillor Morris. Abstain. Councillor Negus. Against. Councillor O'Rourke. Against. Councillor Pierce. For. Councillor Phipps. For. Councillor Pickersgill. For. Councillor Quarterly. Abstain. Councillor Radford. Abstain. Councillor Rippington. For. Councillor Sargent. Against. Councillor Shah. For. Councillor Smith. Abstain. Councillor Thomas. Against. Councillor Threlfall. For. Councillor Tinknell. For. Councillor Wellington. For. Councillor Weston. Abstain. Councillor Whittle. For. Councillor Windows. Abstain. Councillor Wright. Against. Mayor Reese. For. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Results are as follows. 33 for, 20 against, 12 abstentions and two apologies. Therefore, the budget is carried. Thank you. I therefore confirm that the 2021-2022 budget is now in place. That concludes the meeting. Thank you to all councillors and all others for attending the meeting this evening. The next meeting of full council is an extraordinary meeting on the 2nd of March, 2021. Thank you very much and have a good evening. Thank you.